This is Retro Sports Radio. Visit RetroSeasons.com for more sports history. Scorching hot night from Connie Mack Stadium in Philadelphia. The final game of the series between the New York Mets and the Philadelphia Phillies. The temperature reached 100 degrees in Philadelphia today, the hottest day of the summer. For the starting lineups and batting orders for tonight's ball game, let's touch bases with Ralph Shane. All right, Bob Murphy for the New York Mets. Tommy Age will lead off. He'll be batting second to shortstop Bud Harrelson. Batting third, playing left field, Cleon. Batting fourth at first base, and Clendenin. Batting fifth, playing right field, Ron Sloboda. Batting sixth, and playing third base, Joe Foy. Batting seventh, and catching, Jerry Gordy. Batting eighth, and playing second base, Al White. And the pitcher, ninth. Larry Boer will be the leadoff batter. He'll be playing shortstop. Batting second, the second baseman, Tony Taylor. Batting third, playing third, Don Money. Batting fourth at first base, Darren Johnson. Batting fifth, playing left field, Joe List. Batting sixth and catching, Tim McCarver. Batting right field, Byron Brown. Batting eighth, the center fielder, Larry Heitzel. And the pitcher, Chris Short. Batting ninth. The Mets have played the Phillies 17 ball games. This is the last game of the year between these two clubs. The Mets have won 12 and lost 5, and here at Connie Mack Stadium, the Mets have won 6 of the 8 games played. The Mets start their action with a record of 80 wins and 74 losses. They are 3 games back in the loss column to the Pittsburgh Fire to lead over the Chicago Cubs by 2 games. The Mets are in 3rd place, 3 games back. And now from Connie Mack Stadium in Philadelphia, our national anthem. So it is a hot, humid night at Connie Mack Stadium. Light breeze blowing out toward center field. And this ball game is just about to get underway. And here for the play-by-play, -play, Lindsey Nelson. Thank you very much, Ralph Cannon. Hello, everybody. It's Tommy Agee stepping in to lead off now for the New York Mets. He's hitting 280, 24 homers, 73 runs out of that. We are getting underway 10 minutes late here at Connie Mack Stadium because of the lateness in turning on the lights. Here is the pitch. And it's high for a ball. Chris Short on the mound has won nine games and he has lost 15. Left hander. Against the Mets this year, he's won two and lost one. His lifetime record against them is 11 and 5. There's a breaking pitch in for a called strike. 
Dick Sello is the umpire behind the plate. The commissioner of baseball, Boy Schoen, is here tonight. He was present at a press gathering late this afternoon here at the ballpark. Here is a 1-1 pitch to A.G. Swung on and hit deep to center field. Going back is Larry Heisel, and he makes the catch. Way back in left center. Left his feet to haul down the drive that was hit more than 400 feet by Tommy A.G. So there's one away. That'll bring up Bud Harrison, quick hitting shortstop with a 239 average, one home run, 41 runs batted in. Harrison's batting right against the left-handed Chris Short. The Phillies are playing an infield of Darren Johnson at first, Tony Taylor at second, Larry Boa at shortstop, and Don Money at third. This pitch is a little low. Leon Jones moves out on deck. The outfield alignment is Joe List in left, Larry Heisel in center, and Byron Brown in right field. It's a hot night in Philadelphia. Here's a swing and a drive in the air to deep left. Going back is List. He's way back, and he makes the catch at the edge of the warning track. The Mets have blasted two shots here for put out. As Harrelson sent List back to the edge of the warning track in front of the seats out there in left. Two men out, Cleon Jones is the batter. Hitting 284, he has 10 homers and 63 runs batted in. Very short delivers. Swung on and it's hit in the air to right field. And Byron Brown is there. Underneath and waiting and all three of the putouts are in the outfield here in the first inning. Nothing across. In the middle of the first inning, the score is the New York Mets nothing and the Phillies coming to pass. When you get the leap of hungries and your stomach wears a frown, a cheeseburger from McDonald's will help to calm you down. Because the burger is made of pure beef and the cheese is creamy nice. And the best part of the whole thing is McDonald's tasty price. It's a bargain. And scrumped is good eating. The smile, son, and say cheese. A McDonald's cheeseburger, some french fries, and a Coke. Sounds good, doesn't it? McDonald's can put good food in your family and change back in your pocket. You've heard about the dollar it used to buy a bunch. Now when you try to use one, you can hardly get a lunch. Except that McDonald's, now maybe this sounds strange. But pass the buck to us and we'll pass you back some change like nickels and pennies and dimes and other curious little round pieces of metal. At McDonald's, a dollar makes you a big spender. McDonald's can put good food in your family and change back in your pocket. WOKO, the home of the Mets, full of capital district. Ray Sadecki is the pitcher on the mound tonight for the New York Mets. The left-hander has a record of eight wins and four losses against the Phillies this year. He's won two and he's lost none. Sadecki's lifetime record against the Phillies is 15 wins and 13 losses. Larry Boa is up to lead off. He is a quick hitter, batting right. He has an 18-game hitting streak going, and it's the longest Philly hitting streak since Pancho Herrera in 1960. We have the warm-up for the game scheduled at Yankee Stadium now on the Western Union ticker. the pitch. Swung on and it stops up foul and might be playable to Grody. He gets rid of the mask and Grody moves over and makes the catch. So Larry Boa has fouled out to catch it, Jerry Grody and Tony Taylor is coming up. Taylor's hitting 292, nine home runs and 53 runs out of him. The warm-up, Joe Coleman for Washington and Rob Gardner, a former Met, just back from Syracuse, starting tonight for the New York Yankees. Earlier, there had been an indication that the game in New York might be postponed because of a power shortage. As a matter of fact, information was moved to the effect that it had been. Obviously, that is countermanded by the moving of the pitchers warming up. Tony Taylor. Sadecki sits in for a strike. If he moved up, his little bunch. Lindsay, I'll never forget his comment by Rob Gardner that he made on a post-game show on TV. He saw himself pitch for the first time on TV. He threw a curveball, and his comment was, 
My gosh, even I could hit that. <laughs> but he couldn't. Here's a pitch, and it's high for a ball. It's one and one. In St. Louis, a fly night doubleheader tonight between the Chicago Cubs and the St. Louis Cardinals at the end of four innings. The Cardinals two and the Cubs one. Ferguson Jenkins against Bob Gibson. They were rained out last night. Two balls, one strike to Tony Taylor with Don Money waiting on deck. Rob had a great year at Syracuse, and we certainly want to wish him luck. He was a fine fellow with a mess. Two on delivery. And it's on away for a ball. It's three and one. The Mets have an infield here tonight of Don Clendon at first base, Al Weiss at second base, Bud Harrelson at short, and Joe Foy at third. Leon Jones in left, Tommy Agee in center, Ron Swoboda is playing right field. Here's a foul ball back and out of play. It's three and two. The story of Dick Selma's verbal barrage released after last night's game was the big baseball story in here in Philadelphia in the morning papers, which in a fit of temper, Selma had said that he thought the game was fixed and thought that umpire should be investigated. Lisa Bowie Chun before the game told the press that he thought that the penalty was sufficient. Here's a swing and a drive into center field for a base hit. And it is on by A.G. and it will be extra basis for Tony Taylor. He's at second on his way to third. Relay coming in and at third base he is safe. So Tony Taylor is at third. It is a single and a two-base error charged against Tommy Agee in center field. It was a line drive, but Agee came over to try to come up with it and play it back, and instead he came up empty, and the ball went on by for a two-base error. A good relay might have made it a closer play at third. Boy had to come off the back at third to get the relay, then dive back across to try to get Taylor and could not. Don Money's up now. One man out, runner at third. No score. Phillies threatening in the bottom half of the first inning. There's a pitch to the right-hand batter. Low for a ball. Brody bluffs the throw to third. Taylor gets back to the bag in a hurry. It's ball one. and out of play. It's 1-1. One, one. There was word tonight that the umpires themselves did not feel that the $500 fine of Selma was sufficient penalty and that they, with their reports, of course, would work toward his suspension. Here's a 1-1 one, one pick. And it is low for a ball. 2-1. Becky takes the sign from Jerry Grody. Offers 2 1. Swung on and foul back. It's 2 and 2. The official temperature in Philadelphia today reached 95 degrees, the highest of the fall season in downtown Philadelphia. A reading of 100 was recorded in mid afternoon. 2 2 pitch. Swung on it on the ground to third. Foy can't handle it off his glove. The run score. Throw to first is in time. Joe Foy on the edge of the infield grass. Knocked it down. Came up. So he had no play at the plate. So then threw on to first for the put out. But the run score. And now Darren Johnson is the batter. Bills are leading by a score of one nothing. Johnson's hitting 254. The pitch is in for a call strike. Johnson has 27 home runs and 87 runs batted in. Joe Foy got to the ground ball all right, just did not handle it. Low for a ball, no error charge, of course, because he did make the put out at first base. As far as the Mets are concerned, it would have been much better made at the plate. Here's the 1-1 one -one delivery. It's high and away for a ball. Two balls and a strike. Joe List is out on deck for the Philadelphia Phillies. Here's a 2-1 pitch. Fastball in there for a call. Strike two. It's 2-2. Two two. 
George Brunette is the starter tonight for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Something of a surprise move. Carl Morton is starting for Montreal in Pittsburgh. Pitch is low, three and two. It had been presumed that Steve Blass would start tonight, but he's not starting. George Brunette is. So apparently Danny Mershaw is juggling his pitches. Here's a payoff pitch. It is low, and it's a walk to Darren Johnson. First walk issued by Ray Sadecki. Puts Johnson on at first, and Joe List is coming up. List is hitting 200, one homer and four runs batted in, right hand batting left fielder. That pitch is high for a ball. It's one and oh. Again, Sadecki checks. Here's a pitch that's foul back and out of play. So Danny Mershaw, the Pittsburgh Pirates, here in the stretch drive, has gone into his bullpen and pulled out George Burnett as it started. Earlier in the drive up at Montreal, Leo DeRoche of the Chicago Cubs reached into his bullpen and pulled out Bob Miller and posted him as it started. 1-1 one, one pitch. Third ball, a little high. Two balls and a strike now to Joe List. Darren Johnson leads it first. It's 2 1 pitch, fired low and inside. 3 and 1 to List with Tim McCarver next in the order. pitch is high for a ball. That's the second consecutive walk issued by Ray Sadecki. Darren Johnson moves to second. Joe List is on at first. Left hand batting catcher Tim McCarver is coming up with a 244 average. Three homers, six runs batted in. We pause for station identification. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. This is WOKO in Albany, New York. Our temperature 74 degrees. Cahoe Savings Bank time. It's now two minutes until 8 o'clock. Time to look into a low-cost life insurance savings bank plan at Cahoe Savings Bank. Nelson with Ralph Conner and Bob Murphy at Connie Mack Stadium in Philadelphia. Where the Phils are leading the Mets by a score of 1-0. Nolan Ryan gets up to throw down in the bullpen for the New York Mets. Sadecki has walked Darren Johnson and Joe List back-to-back -back here with two men out in the bottom of the first inning. Which to McCarver is low for a ball. Now here comes pitching coach Rube Walker out to the mound. Pitching coach Rube Walker wiping perspiration as he comes out of the dugout, heads for the mound for a talk with Ray Sadecki. The Mets will fly on to Pittsburgh at the conclusion of this ball game tonight. Tomorrow is an off day, and they will then resume against the Pittsburgh Pirates on Friday night, a big series at Three Rivers Stadium. Friday night, Saturday afternoon, and Sunday afternoon, we'll be broadcasting and televising all three games from Pittsburgh this weekend. Then the Mets will be back at Chase Stadium in New York on Monday night to start a series of four consecutive games against the Chicago Cubs to close out the regular National League season. The finale set for a 7.05 p.m. start Thursday night, October 1st. Now, here's a pitch that's low. Sadecki goes behind 2-0 to McCarver. That started the night. Trailing the Pittsburgh Pirates by 3 and the Chicago Cubs by 1. Sadecki's pitch. Swung on it on the ground to third. Joe Foy up for the ball. He'll go to first and in time. Close play, but McCarver is out. So the Phil's got a run. On a hit, there was an error, two walks and two left. And at the end of an inning, the score is the Phil's one and the Mets nothing. Plans for a mail order sale of box and reserve seats for a possible National League Championship Series at Chase Stadium have been announced for the Mets. 
Mail order applications for box and reserve seats must be postmarked on or after midnight Thursday, September 24th to be considered. Tickets will be sold only in two game strips with a limit of two strips per person. Upper stand reserve general admission seats are priced at three dollars each, six dollars per strip. Reserve seats are priced at five dollars each, ten dollars per strip. Box seats are seven dollars each, fourteen dollars per strip. Mail orders for more than two strips will not be considered. Only applications accompanied by a certified check, a money order, or a cashier's check will be considered and should be addressed to Post Office Box 1970, Flushing, New York, zip code 11352. Each order must include an additional dollar to cover the cost of mailing and handling. Championship Series is scheduled to open on Saturday, October 3rd in the city of the Eastern Division winner. After two games, the site will move to Cincinnati, home of the Western Division champ. In the event the championship series is not played at Jay Stadium, tickets can be redeemed at any of the more than 300 branches of the Chase Manhattan or Manufacturers Hanover Trust Company Bank. Now the Mets come up in the top of the second inning, and it's John Clendenin. Clendenin is hitting 291. He has 20 home runs and 90 runs batted, and he's right hand batted. Facing left-hand pitcher Chris Short into the motion. The pitch is on the way. Foul back and out of play. It's strike one. The appearance of Commissioner Bowie Kuhn here today had nothing at all to do with the activities of last night and the dispute that ensued. Here's a pitch. High and away for a ball. The commissioner has made it a practice to visit each of the ballparks in the major leagues at least one time. His earlier visit scheduled here at County Max Stadium had to be postponed and was reset for today. Here's a 1-1 pitch. Low, it hit in front of the plate, comes on by. And uh, just by the plate umpire, Dick Stello, and the crowd gets the kick out of that. It's two balls and a strike. The Phillies are leading here by a score of one to nothing. Short into the motion. Pitch is foul back and out of play. It's two and two to Clendon. Philadelphia Phillies have announced that the last ball game to be played at Tiny Mac Stadium will be here on the night of October 1st when they'll meet the Montreal Expo. 2 2 pitch. Swung on it, on the ground is short. A big hop up to Larry Bohr. Across to Darren Johnson in time, and Clint Dunham's out. Ron Svoboda is the batter. He's hitting 230 with nine homers and 40 runs by the end. There was an editorial today, however, in a Philadelphia newspaper, which said, don't take that announcement too seriously, because the same announcement was made for the closing date last year. They had presumed that the Phils would be playing in their new stadium this year, and it didn't turn out that way. As a matter of fact, right now, all work has been stopped on the new stadium, and there is no completion date, no projection. That is in for a call strike. Swoboda appeared as a pinch hitter last night in the ninth against Selma and struck out on three pitches. Chris Short delivers. Swung on and missed. It's strike two to Ron Swoboda. Carver sends out the sound. There's nobody on. Two strike delivery. Fired a little low, so it's one and two. Joe Foy waiting around there on deck. Pretty sure it takes his cap off to mop the perspiration. One, two, six. Swung on, and this got him with a breaking pitch. It's the first strikeout for short. It's Swoboda swinging two away, and Joe Foy is about it. Foy is hitting 241 for the year. He's had six homers and 37 runs batted in. Short 
Ward with the pitch. That's ball low, and it's ball one. There was a time when Chris Short was one of the slowest workers in the major league. But he had back surgery, and since he's come back from the operation, he works considerably faster than he once did. That's in for a call strike. George used to be the master of moving the dirt around out on the mound. He'd move it over to one side and then over the other with his shoe. Strange, as I say this, he's doing the same thing right now. But one year, his teammates presented him with a set of toy gardener tubes. They thought that he could do a little gardening out there. As a fastball high and away for a ball, it's two and one. men out. Nobody on base. And the Phils lead by a score of one to nothing. Now the 2-1 offering. In there for a call strike two. It's two and two to Joe Foy. The Mets starting the night with a record of 80 wins and 74 losses. The Cubs have won 80 and lost 72. And the Pirates have won 83 and lost 71. 2-2 two -two delivery. Swung on and missed. George strikes out Joe Foy. Gets the side in order. The Mets have not yet had a base runner. Nothing across. And in the middle of the second inning, the score is the Phils won and the Mets nothing. We've always maintained at the bank that our regular checking account is even better than money. It's safer, more businesslike. You can mail a check. And you can make deposits and withdrawals at any office of the bank. Anyway, we wonder just how many people agreed with us that a regular checking account at the bank is even better than money. So we ask a few people. Uh, excuse me, madam. I'm with the National Commercial Bank and Trust Company. So? Well, I wonder, madam, can you think of anything that's even better than money? <laughs> it's, uh, well, not offhand. Uh, well, we decided that maybe we were asking the question the wrong way. So we tried it another way. Uh, excuse me, sir. Mm -hmm. Would you say that a regular checking account at the bank is safer, more convenient, and more businesslike than money? Mm, um, mm, yes, uh, sounds pretty good to me. Well, there you have it. A regular checking account at the bank. It, uh, uh, it sounds pretty good to him. The bank, National Commercial Bank and Trust Company, is a member of the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. WOKO, the home of the Mets for the Capital District. The Bills will be coming up now in the second inning, and it'll be Byron Brown, the right field at the leadoff. They say Ray Sadecki Brown is hitting 250, 10 homers, 36 runs batted in. At the end of five full innings, the Cardinals two and the Cubs one. Ferguson Jenkins 20 and 15 against Bob Gibson 22 and 6. Pitch is in for a call strike. Montreal is at Pittsburgh. Carl Morton 16 and 11 against George Brunet, who has no one or loss record with the Pirates since coming over from the Washington Senators. In for a tall strike. The Cubs and the Cardinals are playing a doubleheader tonight. San Diego is at Atlanta. Steve Allen against Pat Jarvis, who's won 16, lost 13. Houston's at Cincinnati. Jack Bellingham, 12 and 8 against Tony Kroniker, 14 and 9. Pitch is inside for a ball. And the Giants play the Dodgers on the West Coast. The Chicago Cubs did not score in the top of the sixth. Going to the bottom of the sixth, Cards two, and the Cubs won first game. One and two are the count. The Byron Brown is followed by Larry Heisel. Washington is in New York. It's Joe Coleman, eight and ten against Rob Gardner, no record. Cleveland beat Boston five to Steve Hargan over Ken Breck. The Hawk Harrelson had his first summer. Vern Fuller had one, and Joe LaHue had one. Now one, two, six to Byron Brown. Nine away. Chicago White Sox beat Kansas City 6 nothing. Bart Johnson got the win, and Paul Slipdorf took the loss. Charlie McKinney had a home run. California's at Milwaukee Lady. 2-2 two -two pitch. A little high. Detroit is at Baltimore, but it's postponed because of a power shortage, and they'll play tomorrow afternoon. Minnesota is at Oakland, and the Twins already have clinched the title, the pennant, in the Western Division of the American League. This will be a payoff pitch to Byron Brown, and it's on the way. Swung on and missed. Ray Sadecki gets his first strike out. That'll bring up Larry Heisel, the center fielder who's hitting 200 for the year, nine home runs and 41 runs batted in. Championship series in the American League will be between the very same two teams who played for it last year. Minnesota against Baltimore. You may recall Baltimore swept in three straight last year. 
to thus three of five series. Ten for a call strike. In the National League last year, it was the New York Mets against the Atlanta Braves, and the New York Mets swept in three straight. Cincinnati has already clinched now in the West. Breaking pitch, swung on and missed. Two strikes to Heisel. He's followed by Chris Short. The Phils are leading one to nothing. Championship Series is scheduled to start on Saturday, October 3rd in each league. That's high for a ball. It's one and two. And the World Series will be scheduled to start the following Saturday. The World Series will open up in the National League City this year. One, two pitch. High for a ball. Two and two. Zeki's 2-2 delivery. Swung on and foul back. The count holds at 2-2. Gary Grody sends out the sign. This is a curveball missing high. Good so goes three balls and two strikes now. the payoff pitch. Swung on and hit in the air up the alley on right center field. It'll be extra bases for Heisel. He's around first on his way to second. Swoboda up with the ball, plays it back. It's a double for Larry Heisel. That ball went all the way to the scoreboard. Out in right center. And Swoboda played it as it caromed off there. Chris Short coming up now. Pitcher is 3 for 58 this year at the plate. He's had two runs batted in. His average is .052. The Bills are leading one to nothing. They have a runner at second with one man out in the bottom of the second inning. Low and inside for a ball. He said, offers one off. Foul off and out of play. One and one. Chris Short is a fellow who bails out up there at the plate on anything tight. Some pitches that aren't tight. It's not entirely unusual for a pitcher at the plate. More do than don't. Swinging a ground ball to third, taken by Foy. He looks to run it, throws to first in time, no advance, two away. Chris Short with a ground ball right at Joe Foy at third base. Larry Boa is coming up. He's been up one time and he fouled out to the catcher. There's an 18 game hitting streak and an average of 252 with 32 runs batted in. He goes behind 2-0 to Boa, and he's followed by Tony Taylor in the order. <laughs> 2 0 Swung on, and it in the air down the right field line, carrying over toward the stand. For a minute giving chase, it's going out of play. In the second row of the stand, down the right field line. 2-1 and one is the count. To Larry Boa. Kick. Just a little more kick. 
That's one of the things that make R.C. stand out from the other cola. A couple of shifts and you'll catch the difference. Royal Sound Cola. Swing and a ground ball to short. Bud Harrelson has it. Goes across the first in time and the side is out. Larry Bohr grounding out short to first. No runs are hit, no errors, and one left. And at the end of two innings to play, the score is the Phillies one and the Mets nothing. Hi, everyone. I'm Charles Douglas Pitts, and I'm a night people here on WOKO. If you're a night people, too, or an insomniac, or if you're just hanging around between midnight and 6 a.m., lock your radio dial on 1460 WOKO and join me for the good old sound of America and some friendly chatter. Remember, you're only a stranger once on WOKO's Charles Douglas Pitt Show. You're listening to The Sound of America, WOKO, 1460 Radio in Albany. WOKO brings you the best in good time music, all American sports, and essential information 24 hours a day. Come on home to the sound of America. Come on home to WOKO. WOKO, the home of the Mets for the Capital District. 100. We're going now to the top of the third. The Mets coming up, running by one, and here for the play-by-play, Bob Murphy. All right, Ralph, Jerry Grody. Will lead off against the veteran left-hander Chris Short. Short has retired the first six men to face him. However, the first two men up in the game, Tommy Agee and Bud Harrelson, both had hard line drives to the outfield that were caught. And the pitch to Jerry Grody is outside ball one. Chris Short, the tall left-hander from the University of Delaware. Out practically all of last year after undergoing back surgery. Has come back to win nine games this year. And a fastball outside, two balls and no strikes. Al Weiss, the on-deck batter, and then Ray Sadecki. Short has pitched two very strong ball games against the Mets this year. And a line drive hit hard down the right field line, a base hit by Jerry Grody. Jerry around first on his way to second, and he pulls in with a double. Hard hit drive over the head of Darren Johnson, down the right field line, and into the corner. The Mets have their first to base of the game, and the tying run is on second. Al White coming up, Al batting at 2-10. Chris Short looking in to get his sign from Tim McCarver. Here's the pitch on the way. Curve at the knees to call strike. The Chicago Cubs are out of the sixth inning in St. Louis. At the end of five and a half, the Cardinals two and the Cubs one. Pitching duel between Ferguson Jenkins and Bob Gibson. Jenkins a 20-game winner. Gibson a 22-game winner. Jenkins has now won 20 or more four years in a row. And he's the only nice to league pitcher who can say that. And a foul ball hit back upstairs, no play. Montreal got a run in the first inning off George Brunette. Brunette, the left-hander, picked up from Washington, has been working out of the bullpen. He gets his first start. And a 16-game winner, Carl Morton, pitching tonight for Montreal. So the Expos scratched out a run in the first inning at Three Rivers Stadium in Pittsburgh. Left-hander Chris Short with a two-strike count on Al White. Jerry Grody on second, nobody out. And the pitch on the way, fastball, strike three call. Third strike out for Chris Short as he gets Al White and brings up Ray Sadecki. Sadecki, a much better than average hitter for a pitcher especially against right-handers, but in the last game, he's up against the left-hander in Chris Short. The Mets pitching staff, Ray Sadecki and Danny Priscilla, are both left-hand hitters. Both do very well against right-handers, but have a lot of trouble against southpaw pitchers. 
And a ground ball hit down the first baseline foul. Taken across the line by Darren Johnson. No play. The Phillies scored an unearned run in the first inning. And the Phillies lead 1-0. We're in the top half of the third. The Mets have done very well against the Phillies this year. They have won 12 of 17 ball games. An amazing thing, the Phillies, nine games over 500 against the Western Division National League teams this year. Against the Western Division, they won 40 and lost 31. Inside and low to Ray Sadecki, one ball, one strike. And the weatherman says, more hot weather tomorrow. short with a count of one and one on Ray Sadecki. Grody the tying run on second, one down. And a chopper foul off to the left going toward the dugout of the Philadelphia Phillies. No play. One ball and two strikes. The Cubs and Cardinals playing a double hitter. They were rained out last night. They waited a long time trying to get the game in. Second game of that doubleheader in St. Louis tonight, it will probably be rookie southpaw Jerry Roy pitching for the Cardinals and Bill Hands for Chicago. Now short up in pitching position. The one-two delivery. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. He got him with a breaking ball. Fourth strikeout for Chris Short, the 32-year-old left-hander. Now leadoff batter Tommy Yancey comes up. Tommy hit a long drive to left center starting the game off. That was caught on the dead run out on the edge of the warning track by Larry Heinzel. Tommy had the game winning hit last night when he singled off Dick Selma in the ninth inning driving two runs in. Raised his RBI total for the year to 73. Brody leading off second. Here's the pitch on the way. Foul back toward the screen. No play. It's not a large crowd by any means at County Mike Stadium. It is a loud crowd. The Mets again tonight have a lot of fans down from New York. All remaining games for the Phillies this year will be played here in County Mike Stadium. Now the call left-hander checks the runner. Here's the pitch to Tommy Yates. Low and inside, one ball and one strike. After the game tonight, the Mets have three in Pittsburgh and four back in Shea against Chicago, including the added game on Monday night, the 28th. The Mets will play the Cubs Monday night, Thursday night, Wednesday afternoon, and Thursday night. The Thursday night, October 1st game is Fan Appreciation Day, and that game starts at 7.05 p.m. The 1-1 delivery hit hard, a face hook to center field by Tommy Ager. Brody around third is coming home with a tying run. He is 74th, run batted in. It ties the game up. And for Tommy Agee, his 174th base hit. And that ties the club record that had been, had been held by Tommy Davis. 174 hits in one season. Agee hit the ball very hard his first time up. Now this time he lines the ball hard in the center field, a clean base hit, bringing home Jerry Grody. The game is tied 1-1, top of the third inning, Bud Harrell's in the batter. Bud lined out the deep left, his first time up. And it's over, strike one call to the letter. Grody led off with a line double down the right field line. Short then struck out Al Weiss and Ray Sadecki, but Tommy Agee, Delivering a two-out single up the middle, ties the game up. At a throw to first, it is not in time. Billy is keeping an eye on Tommy Yeezy. Tommy has stolen 30 bases. Now Chris Short throws to first base. Did you notice that Tommy Harper joined a very select group? When he homered yesterday at 30th of the year, he also has stolen 30 bases. There goes the runner at a high 
low fly ball hit the right center. Byron Brown moves over. He's under it, and he has it for the out. One run, two hits, no errors, one left. In the middle of the third inning, the New York Mets won, and the Philadelphia Phillies won. You know, nobody's ever met Ty Cobb's record for stolen bases. During his career, he managed to run up a total of 892. Well, stealing bases certainly is a tricky art. Your timing has to be just right or you'll be caught short in the middle. Timing is just as important when brewing a great beer. But that's why Rheingold is the slow way. Long enough to let the beer carbonate itself naturally. And Rheingold's made with the finest natural ingredients. North Dakota barley. Great American corn. Imported and domestic hops and pure brewer's water. So you get all that refreshing, extra dry taste every time. Pour yourself a Rheingold right now. Natural Rheingold. At Rheingold Breweries Incorporated, New York, New York, and Owings, New Jersey, ask you to help keep America beautiful. Tony Taylor faces Ray Sadecki, bottom half of the third inning. Taylor, more than any other Philly, has dealt damaging blows to the next during the course of the year. With the bases loaded, last guy in the last of the eighth inning, he triple driving three runs in. He runs up as if to bunt, takes the pitch as a strike of the inside corner. And Tony Taylor did not like the call by a big fellow, and fellow says get back in the batter's box. It was a lively evening around here last night. Three of the fellows were ejected during the course of the ball game, including the manager, Franco Casey. And it's over, strength to call to Tony Taylor. The Pirates did not score against Carl Morton in the last of the first. At the end of one, Montreal won, Pittsburgh nothing. And a ground ball hit slowly, moving to his left, Joe Foy, and he throws across in time for the out. One out and nobody on. We pause for station identification. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. Wait, this is WOKO in Albany, New York. Our temperature now is 74 degrees. Cohoes Savings Bank time is 28 minutes past 8. Time to open a big dividend savings account at Cohoes Savings Bank with offices in Latham and Cohoes. It was Ralph Gainer and Lindsey Nelson. Last of the third inning, the game tied 1-1. For the Phillies, their number three hitter, Don Money, faces Ray Sadecki. He bounced out to third, his only time up. And a drive hit in the air to right center field, it'll be a base hit. Just beyond the reach of Al Weiss, who legged into the outfield trying to get a play. For the Phillies, their third hit off Ray Sadecki. And Darren Johnson comes up. Darren hitting 254 has 27 home runs, 87 runs batted in. He reached on a walk his first time up. Now the Mets have the infield looking for two in a stride around the left. Last ball, outside, ball one. Let's play the outfield deep against Darren, who has a lot of power, and they play him a stride or two toward left. Run better than holding against base runner Don Money. Serve inside and low, two balls and no strike. Not a breath of air in the ballpark. Certainly not enough breeze to have any effect on the game at all. Two-o delivery, swing and a miss by right Darren Johnson. Two balls and one strike. New York one run on two hits, one error. Philadelphia one run, three hits, no error. The Cardinals lead the Cubs two to one in the fifth inning. Swing and a miss, two and two. St. Louis has been at bat quite a while in the last of the fifth inning. Sometimes you're a fool, sometimes the transmission is just slow and coming through. Now the 2-2 delivery, high and away, ball three. Game time temperature tonight was 84 degrees.
money leaves off first, let's keep an eye on him. And Sadecki lobs the ball over to Clem Better. Let's see if Frank Lucchese has the play on. One man away, money on third, three and two on Darren Johnson. And a throw to first, not in time. Sadecki in a set position. There goes the runner. Here's the pitch lined hard. A base hit the left center field. Around second is Money on his way to third. He's firing the ball back in. The Phillies have runners on first and third. And pitching coach Rube Walker goes to grab the telephone. Darren Jackson on three and two with Money on the go. Ripped the ball hard in the left center for a base hit. Brings up Joe Les, the rookie left fielder. Nolan Ryan gets up again in the bullpen. Lifts the right hand batter. Coming off of a good year in the coast lift. The infield now hoping for a chance to make two. And so that he is in trouble here in the bottom half of the third inning. Money on third. Johnson on first with one man out. Dean tied 1-1. Last ball, strike one. Tim McIver, the on deck hitter. Phillies now have four hits off Ray Sadecki. Sadecki checks the runners, now the pitch. Foul back toward the screen, and Ray gets out in front with a two strike count. Tony Taylor, the leadoff batter, was retired. Money is single to right center and on three and two with money running. Darren Johnson hammered a hard single in the left center. Still for runners on first and third. Sadecki getting his sign from Jerry Gertie. And the pitch on the way. Just missed the outside corner. One ball and two strikes. Last time Sadecki faced the Phillies, he beat them with a brilliant effort, and he struck out 12 along the way. Pitching one and two. High, outside, two and two. Jody walks slowly out in front of the plate. Nolan Ryan picked up the win and relief in the game last night, and Ryan is back to work in the Mets bullpen. Nolan faced only two batters last night. The 2-2 two delivery, outside, ball three. Well, Sadecki had a two-strike count, and now the shot is all the way out at three and two. Now we'll keep an eye on Darren Johnson, the runner on first, and see if he goes. Al Weiss and Buddy Allison looking for two. Here's the pitch, the runner goes, swing and a miss, and now hung up, just on money. Boy, runs him toward home plate, and boy, tags him out, double plays by the tire. Sadecki made the big play. On three and two with Johnson running. Sadecki struck out Joe Lewis. What a big one. Brody flopped the throw to second. That lured Money into the trap. Money was caught between third and home and bagged out by Joe Foy. A big double play for the New York Mets. No runs, two hits, no errors, and one left on. The all-new 1970 New York Mets yearbook is now on sale. And once you see this year's official yearbook, you'll agree this is the biggest, the best, the most colorful ever. 64 pages, more than 250 photographs, including 28 pages of photos in color. Pick up your copy the next time you're at Shea, or if you like, order your copy today by mail. Send $1 in cash, check, or money order to Mets Yearbook, Shea Stadium, Flushing, New York, zip 11368. When you receive your copy, you'll find the centerfold is a handsome, two-page picture in full color of a world champion New York Mets suitable for framing. You'll also find career records of every Mets player, a section devoted to the All-Star Game, and a four-page World Series section. All this and more is yours in baseball's number one buy, the all-new 1970 New York Mets yearbook. To order your copy by mail, simply send $1 cash, check, or money order to Mets yearbook, Shea Stadium, Flushing, New York, 11368. And be sure to include your name and address. This is WOKO, the home of the Mets for the Capital District. He 
Leon Jones leading off against Chris Short. It's the fourth inning, and the pitcher taken ball one. Montreal one, Pittsburgh nothing at the end of an inning and a half. The Cardinals two, and the Cubs one, bottom half of the seventh. Swing and a miss back to Leon Jones. One ball, one strike. Leon fly to right his first time up, batting 284. 1-1 one, one delivery by Short, way outside, it's two balls and a strike. Ray Sadecki made a big play when he struck out Joe Liss on three and two. Brody bluffed the throw through to second base and lured money into a trap between third and home. Pitching two and one, a swing and a miss by Leon. It's two balls and two strikes. Billy scored in the first inning as the result of a base hit and an error. That's tied the game in the third inning on Grody's double and a two out single by Tommy Agee. Pitching two and two. Got a ground ball, and it's hit down to third. Fair ball, grabbed behind third by Money. The long throw in back. Good arm by Don Money. He's still with that grounder deep behind third, almost across the line. One out and nobody on. Now Tim Dunham coming up. Tim Dunham had another important hit last night when he singled with the bases loaded, driving two runs in. Raising his closing RBI total to 90 for the year. It's only four shy of the Mets Club record since that first year of expansion in the old polo grounds by Frank Thomas. The time is running out for Glenn Dunham to tie or better the record. Here's the pitch on the way. Fastball in, it's all shut. Interesting thing for Glenn Dunham, he has 90 RBIs in 113 ball games. His ratio certainly has been impressive. And the pitch thrown to Don Clendon, a fastball over, strike two call. Two veteran left-handers hooked up tonight here at Johnny Mack Stadium. Over the years, Chris Short has been very tough on the Mets. His lifetime mark against the Mets, 11 wins and five losses. Two strike delivery. Well hit fly ball to center field. Waiting under it is the center Gardner, Larry Hanson, and he has it. Sun made good contact, but he hit it straight away. Earlier this year in this ballpark, Sun became the second man in the history of the ballpark to hit one over the outside center field wall. The only other performer to do it was Ricky Allen. Two outs and nobody on, top of the fourth inning, the game even, 1-1, and the batter around Swoboda. High and away, ball one. What a duel they have going out in St. Louis with the 2 game winners at Cup. Ferguson Jenkins against Bob Gibson. Cardinals leading 2-1 in the seventh. He holds up on the swing, just in time, a great low inside, two balls and no strike. Brown was struck out his first time at bat. Chris Short has good control. Let's not walk about it. Had a ground ball, hit toward the hole, money comes up with it going off to his left. And throws hard to Darren Jackson. The next get on, one, two, three. No runs, no hits, no errors, and none left. In the middle of the fourth inning at Johnny Mac Stadium, the New York Mets won, the Philadelphia Phillies won. Weinberg Tires has the Michelin X Radial Tire, the world's first radial featuring a safety belt of steel wrapped around each tire right under the tread. Virtually eliminates punches and blowouts. Plus, you get solid driving control, steady braking power, and great gas mileage. At Weinberg Tires, you can get complete brake and front end care. Two expert mechanics always on hand, so visit Weinberg Tires today and take good care of your car. Weinberg Tires, 935 Central Avenue, Albany, the Capital District's oldest and largest Michelin dealer. 
if you've just moved into a smaller house or apartment, or if you're planning a remodeling job, what's your biggest problem? Well, it can be storage. Vogel Van and Storage has the best warehouse facilities in the area, plus the most modern packing methods and materials. Vogel has years of experience in the moving and storage business. You can be sure of expert, careful service if you'll call Vogel Van and Storage at 436-4881. That's 436-4881. Call today. W-O-K-O, The Sound of America, Albany, New York. Last of the fourth inning in Philadelphia, the Mets won and the Phillies won. The Phillies will have Tim McCarver leading off against Ray Sedecki. It will be Tim McCarver, Byron Brown, and Larry Heisel, 6, 7, and 8 in the batting order. McCarver is 0 for 1. He bows down to Joe Foy on the opening inning. Due to a broken hand, McCarver has played only 37 games this year. He's sitting at 243. Left-hander against left-hander. The pitch by Sadecki. Foul ball back into our broadcasting booth and out of play. Frank one. He had to work very hard in pitching out of trouble in the last inning. It's a hot night, and Ray has thrown quite a few pitches. Ground ball hit hard through the middle of it. He's hit by McCarver. Now he is here, but it lifts it back in. Five hits now for the Phillies, and they have their leadoff batter on. Which means that once again, Ray Sadecki is under the gun, and will have to be reaching back for the extra. We're going to the ninth inning in St. Louis with Bob Gibson and the Cardinals leading the Chicago Cubs and Ferguson Jenkins by a score of 2-1. to one. The hitter is Byron Brown, the right fielder, and the breaking ball is over to strike one. Nolan Ryan is up for the third time in the next bullpen. Brown, right-hand batter. Fouls it back upstairs to counter strike two. Byron Brown hitting at 249. You have to be careful with him. He does have power. Larry Heisel is the on deck batter. Sadecki takes his runner and out of the pitch. Strike three called. He got him. Sadecki's third strike out, and he gets Byron Brown on three pitches. With one away, the center fielder, Larry Heisel, will be stepping in. And Heisel hit a hard, long double to right center his first time up. Heisel strikes out a lot, but when he makes contact, he is strong. Pitch by Sadecki, swing and a miss, thank one. That's one on the Phillies, one last in the fourth inning. Deep to left center, way back, way back, and gone, a home run. A two-run homer by Larry Heisman. And he hit it over the 410 foot mark. So Heisman has been up twice, doubled, and hit a home run. And the Phillies are in front, three to one. For well, Heisman, his 10th home run of the year. A line shot that exploded off the bat. It almost straight away in the center, just a little bit toward left center, where it cleared the wall at the 410 mark. And Heisel has been hurting the match in the series. So Chris Short steps in, he now has a two run lead, the pitch by Sadecki. Ground ball that is going foul down the third base line. Heisel's home run is 10th. Last year as a rookie, sidelined about half of the year, he had 20 home runs. Next pitch by Ray Sadecki, and a shot to short. A one-hopper handled by Bud Harrelson. Now he straightens up, throws to Glendennon, and short is out. Low line drive, and it was 
was wicked. It's directly towards Buddy Howell. And he caught the hop right up in front of his face. Two outs and nobody on. Top of the batting order for the shortstop, Larry Boer. Boer, a switch hitter, has gone over for two. Fouled out to the catcher, bounced out to short. He's riding an 18-game hitting streak. Billy's three and the Mets one on a two-run homer by Larry Heisel. And a ground ball hit down to Joe Foy at third. He's up with it. Throws to Glenn Denham. Billy's retired. But they regain the lead, scoring two runs on two hits. No errors and none left on. At the end of four, it's the Phillies three and the New York Mets one. To really appreciate our cigar, you have to smoke their cigar. Go ahead. Light up any other two-for-a-quarter cigar in America. Then light up a two-for-a-quarter White Owl New Yorker. Take a puff on their cigar. That's pretty good. Then take a puff on our White Owl New Yorker and see what you think. Do it a few more times. A puff on theirs. A puff on ours. A puff on theirs. And a puff on ours. If you think this is a good way to make a point, you're right. But don't take my word for it. Try it yourself. All you need is a White Owl New Yorker and any other two-for-a-quarter cigar in America. To really appreciate our cigar, you have to smoke their cigar. A White Owl New Yorker. Our cigar. Running here in Philadelphia, Phillies lead by a score of 3 1 on high school's two run homer. Joe Foy facing Chris Short. Foy was struck out his first time up. Joe hitting 240 with six home runs. Swing and a miss for the high heart. Joe Hodges has no one around, continue to work in the bullpen, indicating he would put up a pinch hitter if the mess can get somebody on. Six, seven, and eight in the batting order due to hit. Now it's high, and Foy lays off. One ball, one strike. The Mets scored a run in the third on a double by Grody and a two-out single by Tommy Eagle. Billy scored an unearned run in the first and then added two in the fourth inning on high school home run. Swing and a miss for the breaking ball, one and two. Jerry Grody on deck and then Al White. The Pirates got a run to tie up the Montreal Expos. They are tied one-to-one in the second. Swing and a miss. He's steady now on a fastball up at his eye. Boy, just down swinging for the second time. Five strikeouts for Chris Short, and the veteran left-hander appears to be throwing very hard. Now the hitter is Jerry Grody. Jerry has one of the two hits off Chris Short and has scored the Mets run. It's all over in St. Louis. The Cardinals defeated the Cubs in the first game of the doubleheader, 2-1. to one. Bob Gibson beating Ferguson Chicken. Outside, ball one. The amazing Bob Gibson has now won 20-1 of his last 24 decisions. Gibson, in winning his 23rd game of the year, Allowed the Cubs only two base hits. Pass ball to Grody. A strike, one ball and one strike. Here's the line score. It was St. Louis two runs, seven hits and no errors. The Cubs one run, only two hits and four errors. Both pitchers went to root, Ferguson Jenkins and Bob Gibson. Gibson is now 23 and 6. And a drive in the air to right center, cutting over Byron Brown. He has it. Losing pitcher Ferguson Jenkins has won 20, lost 16. The Expos and the Pirates are in the top of the third inning, and they are tied 1 1. While uh, Morton pitching against veteran left hander George Brunette. Kenny Singleton has come out on deck. Swing and a miss by Al Weiss, drag one. Sadecki is scheduled to bat. Next, Singleton is in the on-deck circle. Two outs and nobody off. And 
Got a curve, drops under the knees for a call strike to Al White. And for short, looks like he's going to be hard to handle. He has not walked a man, struck out five, allowed just two hits. And the pitch on the way, just got a piece of it, a foul ball, two strike down to Al White. Trail, three to one, top of the fifth And the pitch on the way by Chris Short, a fastball over, strike three call. Al White is caught looking for the second time. The sixth strikeout for Chris Short. No runs, no hits, no errors, and none left. So we've traveled halfway in the middle of the fifth inning. The Philadelphia Phillies three and the New York Mets one. Clam friends, that's your dollar bill. Your fin or fin if it's five dollars, your saw buck is ten a double saw. That's your twenty dollar bill. Eddie Edwards here with a financial glossary of the air. Just a few of the inside expressions and jargon you might hear me use on the radio. And you know, listeners often recognize me on the street, and by golly, I'm telling you, they're wonderful folks. They'll come directly to me and they'll say, e. Eddie, you're an investment man, a financial fella. Tell me, where can I invest my money and get a guaranteed yield on it? They'll ask me that, and in return, I tell them about the bank book. Yes, from the bank. The bank book pays you a guaranteed 5% per annum. That means per year on your savings. The bank only requires an initial deposit of at least $500. Only $500. Additional deposit of at least $100 and 90 days written notice if you want to make a withdrawal. That's your bank book story. It has a golden cover. You know it's top quality class. The bank, National Commercial Bank and Trust Company, is a member of the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. Nolan Ryan comes in the ball game to take over the pitching last of the fifth inning. Ryan's last two outings in relief. He has saved the game for Danny Priscilla. He was the winning pitcher last night as the Mets rallied to the ninth inning to win it. Last night, Nolan faced only two batters, retired both. One of your seventh game of the year against Ken Lawson. For Nolan Ryan, this will be his fourth straight relief outing. He went to the bullpen on September the 13th. Tony Taylor, Don Money, and Darren Johnson. Two, three, and four. And the total batting order to hit against Ryan. In the last half of the fifth inning. Ray Sadeghi did not have his good stuff going for him in the bank. Ray worked four innings, allowed three runs, six hits. Walked two and struck out three. Ray was a little bit wild in the strike zone. Tony Taylor has singled the right center. He raced around the third when the ball got by. Tommy Agee for an error. And then he came in on the ground out. Ryan's delivery is outside ball one. Every game, virtually a must game for the New York Mets. And a fastball inside of the letters. Two balls and no strikes to Tony Taylor. Tony Taylor hitting 293. And a line drive down the right field line. A base hit rolling deep down into the corner. Being pursued by Ron Swoboda. And Tony Taylor eases into second with a double. Taylor hitting late against Ryan's fastball, hit it right over the pin, better said, and fair by about a foot. It was hit hard and went flying down into the corner. By the way, if you're thinking of starting up a savings or a checking account, drop into any convenient Chase Manhattan brand. Remember, you've got a friend, a Chase Manhattan member of the FDIC. Money, the third baseman, has one for two, singled his last time up. Swing and a miss, strike one. Money is hitting 302. After Money got his base hit, Johnson followed with a base hit, putting runners on first and third. Didn't seem a big play in the ballgame. Sadecki struck out Joe Liss on three and two, and they caught Money. Wild pitch goes all the way to the backstop. And moving over to third, Tony Taylor. Ryan on his serve, uncorked a wild pitch. And the count is one and one, the runner goes to third. And Gil Hodges gets Ron Herbal up in the bullpen. Now 
now the Mets have to bring the infield in, which always gives the advantage to the hitter. Nolan Ryan into his windup. Here's the pitch on the way. High fly ball. It's a deep right field. It will score a run. Taylor is tagged up. Swoboda makes the catch. Here comes the throw by Ron Swoboda. He threw it completely over the head. Very good. He knew he had to make a very impossible throw because he was out there pretty deep. So Ron is trying to get even more than he possessed on the throw to a completely over Grody's head. It was a desperation try because Ron knew he was that far out of the outfield. Phillies lead by three, they're in front four to one. Sacrifice fly and a run batted in for Don Money. A hard ground ball hit by Darren Johnson through the hole in the right field for a base hit. And Darren Johnson hit Ryan's first pitch into right for a clean single. And Nolan Ryan runs into trouble as he takes over the pitch in the last of the fifth inning. Ron Herbal throwing hard in the bullpen, and here comes Gil Hodges. Gil Hodges is on his way to the mound. Ryan has faced three men. All three have hit the ball hard. Taylor doubled on the right field line. Money hit a fly ball to rather deep right field, getting the run home. And Darren Johnson has single to right, and Gil Hodges takes the ball. So Ron Herbal comes in the ball game. He will be the third pitcher called on by the New York Mets. The Phillies in front by a score of 4-1, bottom half of the fifth inning. And while we're waiting on Ron Herbal to come in, let's check with Ralph Kainer and get updated on the other major league action. All right, Bob Murphy, but first let's pause for station identification. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. This is WOKO in Albany, New York. Our temperature 74 degrees. Cahoe's Savings Bank time, 2 till 9. Time to take advantage of student loans at Cahoe's Savings Bank. Ralph Kiner, along with Bob Murphy and Lindsey Nelson from Johnny Mac City in Philadelphia. That's trailing by a score of 4-1 to one as the Phillies bat in the bottom of the fifth inning. The St. Louis Cardinals beat the Chicago Cubs in the first game of their twilight doubleheader, 2-1, to one, as Bob Gibson pitched the two-hitter. It was his 23rd win. He's lost six. The losing pitcher was Ferguson Jenkins. His record, 20-16. and 16. Cubs made four errors in that ball game as the St. Louis Cardinals scored two runs in the second and made them hold up as the Cubs got one run in the fourth. At the end of three, San Diego nothing, Atlanta nothing. At the end of two, at Cincinnati four, Houston nothing. San Francisco scheduled against Los Angeles. And at Pittsburgh, at the end of two and a half innings, Montreal one, the Pittsburgh Pirates one. Carl Morton 16 and 11 going for the Expos. George Burnett 0-0 going for the Pirates. In the American League at the end of three, the Yankees three, Washington one, Coleman and Rob Gardner working that ball game. Dick Billings got a home run in the third with no one on for Washington his first of the year. Cleveland beat Boston five to two. Winning pitcher was Hargan, Harrelson, Fuller, and Lou had home runs. White Sox beat Kansas City six nothing as the winning pitcher was Bart Johnson, a five hitter. California scheduled against Milwaukee, Detroit, Baltimore postponed because of the car shortage. And Minnesota against Oakland. All right, Ralph. Gil List, the left fielder, a right-hand batter, is up against Ron Herbal. Herbal throws over to first, keeping an eye on Darren Johnson. Herbal leads the National League in appearances. And a foul ball is back in stairs, no play. For Ron Herbal, who has won nine and lost six this year, this marks his 73rd ball game. Ron Herbal. And a throw to first by Herbal. Now Gary Gentry is getting up in the bullpen. The pitch by Herbal. Breaking ball in for its all strike. Billy is leading 4-1, to one, last of the fifth inning. They have Darren Johnson on first base with one man out. The batter is still left the left fielder. He's a right-hand hitter. And he holds up on his swing and it just missed inside. One ball and two strikes. Ron Herbal off the stretch. 
Foul ball back to the screen, no play. The Expos and the Pirates are tied 1-1 with a buck sitting on the third. Bob Gibson won his 23rd. Gibson got off to a slow start this year. He was 2-3 on the 18th of May. Now he's 23 and 6. Pitching 1-2. and two. Under the knees, the count is even on Joe List, and Herbal thought he had him struck out. Pirates are out in the last of the third inning. It's one to one at the end of three. Swing and a miss, he struck him out. Ron Herbal strikes out Joe Lift. One man away, the batter coming up, Tim McCarver. McCarver singled to center field in the fourth inning and later scored a run. The veteran backstop has one for two. Billy's got two in the fourth inning on the two run homer by Larry Heisel. And they have added a run off Nolan Ryan here in the fifth. And a high pop-up off McCarver's bat. Foy comes down the line in foul ground. Near the fungo circle, he makes the catch. And the side is out. So Herbo comes in to get the Phillies out. One run, two hits, no errors, and one left. At the end of five in Philadelphia, it's the Phillies four and the New York Mets one. Weinberg Tires has the Michelin X Radio Tire, the world's first radio featuring a safety belt of steel wrapped around each tire right under the tread. Virtually eliminates punctures and blowouts. Plus, you get solid driving control, steady braking power, and great gas mileage. At Weinberg Tires, you can get complete brake and front end care. Two expert mechanics always on hand, so visit Weinberg Tires today and take good care of your car. Weinberg Tires, 935 Central Avenue, Albany, the Capital District's oldest and largest Michelin dealer. Want to save a lot of money on beer and soda? Want to shop quickly while doing it? The big three discount beverage centers sell nothing but beverages. Sell them in volume. You get the savings by six pack or case. Fast service direct to your car. No checkout line. Save yourself time and money at the big three. Albany Beverage Discount Center at the sign of the giant. Wolf Road in Colony. Marty's Discount Beverage, 218 4th Street in Troy. Glenville Beverage, 53 Freeman Bridge Road, Schenectady. The big three. Open seven days a week. the sixth inning here in Philadelphia. The Mets are putting up a pen hitter. And to tell you all about it and follow the action for you, here is Ralph Gaines. All right, Bob Murphy, the Mets trailing by three with four innings to go and a pen hitter for the pitcher, Ron Herbal, is Ken Singleton. Out in the bullpen, Gary Gentry, he'll be the next man for the Mets. Chris Short, who has given up one run, allowed two hits while striking out six, set to go. And the left-hander's first pitch to Singleton, high a fastball missing ball one. Singleton batting right-handed. Batting 258 for the year with five home runs and 26 runs batted in. Short has not walked the batter and the left-hander back and the pitch is lined over first to base hit. Singleton goes to first base and holds there as the right fielder Byron Brown fields the ball and the Mets have one on with no one out and the batter coming up is Tommy Agee. Tommy has accounted for the Mets run when he singled the center field to drive in Jerry Grody back in the third after Grody had doubled. The base hit by A.G. came with two men out. His first time up, he was robbed of an extra base hit by Larry Heisel in deep center field. A.G. hitting 281. He has 74 RBIs, 24 home runs. Now short from the set position. And the first pitch to A.G. A.G. tries to bunt it, bunts it foul out of play. Strike one. Tommy trying to get on, trying to catch money back deep at third. So a one strike count. Cubs are losing their ball game, now one half game ahead of the Mets. Have a record of 80 wins and 73 losses. The Mets have 180 and lost 74. Now two and a half games back of the Pittsburgh Pirates. And they have one more to play tonight. One strike count. Short again in the set position. And the pitch. A.G. swings and fouls the ball over toward the Mets dugout. Going over is Darren Johnson. The ball drifting 
Out of play into the stands, just out of his reach. So A.G. with a two-strike count. After this ball game, the Mets have seven to play. Three with the Pittsburgh Pirates and four with the Chicago Cubs. This is game number 165. This is a 155. Two strike count. And a lot of Mets fans here in this ballpark. Singleton is not being held on at first base. Johnson playing about three steps behind him. And the pitch is outside. Ball one. Chris George spotting the fastball outside to count one ball and two strikes. George this year making his 33rd start. He has won nine and lost 15. Against the Mets, he has won two and lost one this year. Lifetime, he has defeated the Mets in, by 11 times. Well, the Mets have got to him five. George, better than left hander. The one two pitch. It is lying to center, a base hit. Might go for extra bases. It goes on through. Singleton on his way to third. He is being held up at third, and Agee goes in with the double. So a line shot by the center fielder, just a shade toward right center. That ball hit so hard that Heisel had no chance to get to it. And the Mets now have the time run coming to the plate, and the batter is Bud Harrelson. No one out when the top of the sixth inning, and the conference at the mound. Frank Lucchese, the manager of the Philadelphia Phillies, is out to talk to his pitcher. is now getting out to throw in the bullpen and I believe Grant Jackson is going to join him. It is Grant Jackson the left-hander along with Bill Wilson the right-hander. That's trying to get back in this ball game. Agee doing his best. Yesterday, two for five with two big runs batted in to win the ball game. Here tonight, he's two for three. Harrelson out deep to left his first time up and he Fight out to right his next time up. 0 for 2. And short into the windup. Here's the pitch. It's way inside. A ball. A ball knocked down by McCarver. Phillies with their infield back. At short and second. In at first and third. They lead 4 to 1. On deck batter for the Mets, Cleon Jones. Now short nods. Yes, goes into the windup. And the 1-0 pitch. It is over for a call strike. Pitch over the inside corner, a fastball, and they count one ball and one strike. Bud is 0 for 3 in this series. Last night he had three walks. He has set a new Met record for walks in the season. Has a total of 90. 1-1 one, one pitch, grounded foul, and the count goes up to 1-2. and two. Short turns his back to the plate, looks out toward center field, checks his spikes. Now does a little ground work in front of the pitching rubber, and then looks in for the sign. One ball, two strikes. Now he steps back off the rubber, and Bud Harrelson steps out of the batter's box. Time call. Now Harrelson back in and short. Ready to go. Here's the windup and pitch. It is inside. Bud takes a close pitch. Two balls, two strikes. Jordan has had seven complete games this year with his nine wins. Again, he takes the signs, goes into the windup. Here's the pitch. It is taken inside and low, and the count full now. Three and two to Bud Harrelson. Bud represents the potential time run in this ball game. No one out. Top of the sixth inning. Leon Jones on deck. Runners not too far off. Here's the pitch. It is hit hard down in the hole in through the left field. Singleton scores from third. Agee had held up to see whether or not the ball would be caught by 
The shortstop, Larry Boy, he goes to third. So the Mets get a run. A run batted in for Bud Harrelson, his 42nd. The tying run is at first. No one out. And with runners at first and third, Cleon Jones comes up. Leon is 0 for 2 in the ball game. Jones has flat out the right field, grounded out the third. He is 0 for 5 in this series, his average dropping down to 283. And time call as Chris Short goes out to pick up some paper out in front of the mound. Short ready to go. The first pitch to Jones. Taken high and away, a fastball missing ball one. One ball, no strike. Jones being played straight away by the outfield. More or less grouped the shade toward the alley, both in left and right. Now the pitch. High and outside again. Two balls, no strike. and the right-hander throwing in the bullpen for the Phillies along with left-hander Grant Jackson. The on-deck batter for the Mets, John Glendennon. A.G. at third, Harrelson at first, and the 2-0 pitch. It is swung on and hit foul in the air, out of play on the first base side. Another count, two balls, one strike. Stone, an outfielder going down to the bullpen to probably warm up. He has a great arm. Montreal got a run in the top of the second, fourth. They now lead two to one after three and a half innings. Montreal two, Pittsburgh one. The pitch to Jones. Breaking ball high, ball three. So Jones will count his way, three balls, one strike. Carlson with a short lead at first base. Short with the pitch. Harrelson holds the pitch inside. Ball four, and that loads up the bases. That puts the tying run at second with no one out, and it brings up the Mets RBI man, Don Glendinen. And now Frank Lucchese is going out to the mound, and we will have a pitching change. Possible chance that an outfielder will go in the ball game as the pitcher for the Philadelphia Phillies will be due up in the bottom of the sixth inning. And that way they can put the batting order in position for the pitcher not to be involved in hitting in the bottom of the sixth. Now coming in is Bill Wilson. Bill Wilson, who pitched in last night's ball game. Wilson last night worked two and a third innings, gave up no runs, allowed one hit, struck out two, and walked one. So they are making an outfield change. Coming out of the ball game, Joe Liff, the left fielder, and Stone is going in. Ron Stone to play left field. And they will switch batting positions with Stone batting in the pitcher's position, the ninth position in the batting order. And going out, of course, the pitcher will bat in Joe Liff's spot, which was number five. And as the pitchers make this change, let's check out the action in the National and the American League with Bob Murphy. In the fourth inning at Three Rivers Stadium in Pittsburgh, Montreal 2, Pittsburgh 1. Carl Morton, 16 and 11, the Montreal pitcher. Veteran southpaw George Brunette making his first start for the Panthers. As Bob Gibson hurled a two-hitter, the Cardinals defeated the Cubs 2-1 in the first game of the doubleheader, making up last night's ring dot game. The Cardinals scored both of their runs in the second on back-to-back -back singles by Luis Melendez and Ted Simmons. Melendez scored on an error by Ron Sato, and Simmons scored on a single by Julian Javier. The only hits given up by Gibson were a triple by Beckert and a single by Pepitone. Gibson won his 23rd. He now has won 21 of his last 24. Ferguson Jenkins the loser. In the second game, it'll be Bill Ham, 17 and 13, against Jerry Royce, the rookie left-hander, 6 and 8. San Diego won, Atlanta nothing at the end of four. Cincinnati 4, Houston nothing in the third inning. 
Later tonight, the Giants and Dodgers in Los Angeles. Yankees three, Washington one at the end of four. Coleman against Rob Gardner. Cleveland beat Boston five to two, stopping the Red Sox winning streak. Hargett the winner, Brett the loser. Hawk Harrelson hit a home run as did Vern Fuller and Joe LaHue of the Red Sox. The White Sox blanked the Royals six to nothing. And the other games are just getting underway. And the Tiger Baltimore game was postponed because of the power shortage. Now we're set for the action here. A big moment for the Mets. And all set to follow it for you, Ralph Kaner. All right, Bob Murphy, the base is loaded. Don Crendon and the batter, no one out top of the six. The Mets need two to tie. And then in, has grounded out and flied out. Right hand batter, he leads the club and runs better than with 90. Batting at 290. And the first pitch by Bill Wilson is inside a ball. Wilson with a record of one win and no losses, making his fifth appearance against the Mets. He was in last night's ball game, worked two in the third innings, gave up one hit and no runs. Has a record of 1 0. There's a hard smash to short. It'll be a double play. The roll over to Taylor covering at second base. And the throw to first base, a double play. On the play, the Mets get a run as AG scores from third base. That was a one hop drive right at Larry Bohr, the shortstop. He took it, and from there on, it was a routine play. They had all the time in the world to make the double play. And the Phillies pick up two quick outs. So Wilson on one pitch, picking up two outs. And now coming up for the Mets is Ron Sabota. They trail by one. Well, Ron represents the time run. He is not going to bat. He has been called back. And we're going to have Dave Marshall bat for Ron Sabota. That ball was hit right on the nose, but right at Larry Bohr, the shortstop. No run batted in on the double play. Dave Marshall coming up. Dave hitting 257, has six home runs, 29 runs batted in. That run will be charged to Chris Short, but at this point, he can win the ball game. He worked five innings, and the Phillies lead four to three with no one on. Pardon me, on the play, Harrelson went to third, so he cannot win the ball game if Harrelson scores. Dave Marshall, left-hand batter, stepping in the batter's box. Bill Wilson, checking the signs. He's working from the set position, not taking any chances. On Harrelson the third, the first pitch in there for a call strike. One strike count. Marshall has had two pinch hit home runs this year. Now Wilson back, and the pitch is high for a ball. It's one ball and one strike. One ball, one strike. Wilson sets. Here's the pitch. It's way outside. Ball two. Two and one. Now the signs go out. Marshall checks. Goes in the set position. Checks Harrelson at third. And the 2-1 delivery. It is swung on and fouled back out of play. The count goes to two balls and two strikes. Two balls, two strikes. The tying run is at third base. Two men out, top of the sixth inning. The attendance here tonight, 5,683. And a 2-2, the pitch to Marshall. It is over a call strike three, and Wilson does quite a job in relief. He gets Don Clendenner to hit into a double play with the bases loaded and strikes out Dave Marshall. In the inning, the Mets score two runs on three hits. No errors, one man left on, and the score in the middle of the sixth inning, the Phillies four, the Mets three. Now you can paint your house and get a thoroughly professional job that's guaranteed for five years. Golden Premium One Coat House Paint by the makers of famous Murphy Paint. At Racklin Wallpaper and Paint, 1721 State Street, Connected 8. Murphy Golden Premium gives a brilliant finish. 
Two coat coverage with just one coat. And super gloss retention. Solve your exterior problems for five years with Murphy Paint from Rackland Wallpaper and Paint, 1721 State Street, Schenectady. Hi, everyone. I'm Charles Douglas Pitts, and I'm a night people here on WOKO. If you're a night people, too, or an insomniac, or if you're just hanging around between midnight and 6 a.m., lock your radio dial on 1460 WOKO and join me for the good old sound of America and some friendly chatter. Remember, you're only a stranger once on WOKO's Charles Douglas Pitt Show. Seventy-four degrees in the capital district, WOKO. We're going to the bottom of the sixth. The Phillies leading by a score of four to three, and Gary Gentry is the new pitch in the ball game for the Mets. Gary Sadecki started, went four innings, was charged with three runs. He gave up six hits, struck out three, walked two. Nolan Ryan was charged with one run, giving up two hits in one third of an inning. Ron Herbel gave up no hits and no runs in two thirds of an inning, was taken out for a pinch hitter when the Mets rallied to get back in the ball game. And now Gary Gentry. Gary with a record of nine wins and nine losses. This is his 31st appearance. And with a right-hander coming in, Byron Brown scheduled up. The Phillies are going to a platoon system, and Oscar Gamble is going to take over for Brown in the outfield and pinch it for him. The Mets have left Ken Singleton in the ball game. He singled to start up the rally. And, of course, he is a quick hitter, and that would give the advantage if they do change pitches. Later on in the ball game, Singleton can bat either way. Oscar Gamble, a left-hand batter. In last night's ball game, Gamble had two hits in four trips to the plate, one of them a triple. Gamble hitting 263, has one home run, 18 runs batted in. And the first pitch by Gentry. Low and away, ball one. Phillies, four runs, eight hits, no errors. The Mets have three runs, five hits, and one error. And the one error cost them a run. And here's a swing and a miss in the count. One ball and one strike. one one delivery it is hit out towards second right at ken boswell a soft line drive and ken al white by me and al makes the catch that'll bring up larry heisel it was his two-run home run that broke a one-one tie back in the fourth inning heisel is two for two in this ball game a double and a home run his average for the year 204 he has 10 home runs 22 doubles 43 rbis He also has struck out 136 times this year. And there's a swing and a miss, strike one. He has played in 119 ball games and has struck out 136 times. In last night's ball game, he had a triple and three times up. Next pitch is a ball and the count one ball and one strike. Entry in his 31st appearance. Two. One ball, two strikes. This is Gentry's third relief appearance. Phillies four, Mets three. One out, bottom of the sixth. The next pitch, a half swing, and it's called a ball. I still checked in time. We count two balls, two strikes. Gentry leans in, checks out Jody Sines, goes into the windup and the 2-2 two -two pitch. It is inside, ball three, and Gentry three and two to Larry Heisel. Ron Stone is the on-deck batter, batting in the ninth position. At the end of one, Chicago nothing, St. Louis nothing in the second game. Bill Hands against Jerry Roy. First game, Cardinals won two to one as Gibson Pitch the two-hitter. Now a swing and a foul back, so the count remains three and two. Mets 
last game, if everything goes according to schedule, ever at Connie Mack Stadium. Ballpark built back in 1909. Now Gentry taking time before checking the sign. And again, his 3-2 pitch. Swung on and missed, and high school struck out for the 137th time this year. At the end of four, Montreal two, Pittsburgh one. Pittsburgh did not score in the bottom of the fourth inning. Carl Morton pitching for the Expos against George Brunette for the Pirates. Now with two men out, Ron Stone steps up for the first time. Hitting 267. He has three home runs, 38 runs batted in. He has played in 116 games. And the pitch by Gentry, a changeup, it's over, call strike. Phillies four, the Mets three. Two men out, bottom of the sixth. Boy being moved back to a deeper third base position by the Mets bench. Now again a change up. This one even slower than the first and it is high and away. One ball, one strike. Still is in one run ball games. They have won 28 and lost 23. Best in the league. Played 51. One run ball game. Now at 1-1, the pitch is outside. A fastball missing. Two balls, one strike. Two balls, one strike. Gentry back. Pitches one on a miss. The fastball, two and two. Brandenon at first base. Weiss at second. Harrelson at short. Boyd third. Two-two delivery. It is a curveball. A check in the swing. Just low. And the count goes full to three and two. Both pitch. Ball in the outfield, Cleon Jones in left, Tommy Agee in center, Ron Sobota in right. Now the wind up and 3 2 pitch. It is hit the deep right center, extra bases going over his Agee playing the ball off of the wall, dropping it, picking it up, but Stone stays at second base as Agee's strong throw goes all the way to third. So a 3-2 pitch and a double by Ron Stone. And the Phillies have a runner at second with two men out. And Larry Boa coming up. And we pause for station identification. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. This is WOKO in Albany, New York. Our temperature 74 degrees. Cahoe Savings Bank time 28 past 9. Time to save at Cahoe Savings Bank where interest is the highest in Latham and Cahoe's. Ralph Kiner along with Bob Murphy and Lindsey Nelson from Connie Mac Stadium. Well, he's leading four to three. They have a runner at second and Larry Boa coming up. Conference at the mound between Jerry Grody and Gary Gentry. Now, Grody back to give out the sign. Boa is 0 for 3 in this ball game. He brought an 18-game hitting streak into the game, and he's batting from the left-hand side of the plate for the first time. Boa hitting 251 for the year. Two for three last night. And Gentry's pitch. It is low and outside a ball. Gentry with a record of nine wins and nine losses. And the right-hander sets up. The 1-0 delivery. Ball two. This time outside but high. And two balls, no strike. Phillies now have nine base hits in this ball game. They have had runners on in every inning. Left two on in the first when they scored an unearned run. Left one on in the second. A double play got messed out of a jam in the third when they had two men on. Now the two open. Fastball over, call strike. In the fourth inning, they got two runs and a single and a home run. 
fifth inning. They got a run on two hits and left one on. And here they have a runner at second. They count two and one, two men away. And the pitch by Gentry. Inside a ball. And the count, three balls and one strike. Tony Taylor is the on-deck batter. He has been hot in this ball game, two for three with two runs scored. Three balls, one strike. Gentry set. And the pitch. Then for a call strike, and the count goes full to three and two. Gentry has been three and two on his last three batters. The sign is out. Gentry set. And the pitch. Swung on and foul tipped in the Grody's glove and strike three. So Gentry strikes out two in the inning, surviving the double. No runs on the one hit. And one man left on. And the score. At the end of six, the Phillies four, the New York Mets three. I am a going on and on. should be a simple thing made with natural ingredients. Good water, North Dakota barley, great American corn, imported in domestic hops, and thyme. A simple thing that lets Rheingold carbonate itself naturally. If you wonder why Rheingold Extra Dry tastes better than other beers, it's because we keep it simple and natural. Natural Rheingold. Incorporated, New York, New York, and Orange, New Jersey ask you to help keep America beautiful. WOKO, the sound of America, Albany, New York, 28 minutes before 10. We're going out of the top of the seventh inning. The Mets trailing by a score of four to three. The Phillies have Oscar Gamble in right field. He was a pinch hitter for Byron Brown. And the Mets are going to pinch hit for Joel Foy as Wayne Garrett comes up to the plate. Boy had struck out his first two times up. Garrett, a left-hand batter, batting 251. Last night's ball game, Wayne had two hits and five times up, but it was a big hit, a double. And he takes the first pitch for a call strike. On the mound, Bill Wilson. He came in with a bases loaded and no one out in the sixth. Got Don Clendenin on one pitch to hit into a double play with the Mets getting the run. Then struck out Dave Marshall, a pinch hitter. One strike pitch outside, and the count one ball and one strike. Montreal got a run on the top of the fifth. They lead Pittsburgh three to one after four and a half. Morton against Brunette. In the second inning, Cubs did not score, so that game after one and a half, nothing, nothing. St. Louis beat the Cubs in the first game two to one. And a pitch low to Garrett, two balls, one strike. Two balls, one strike. Wilson with a record of one and all. In the windup and the pitch to Garrett. Taken high and it's three and one. Chris George started the ball game for the Phillies. Lasted five innings. Was charged with three runs on five hits. He struck out six. Walked one. The walk got him out of the ball game. Brought Bill Wilson in. A three-one delivery. High ball four and the Mets have the time run on as Garrett walked. Wayne Garrett picking up his 73rd walk. And the Mets have the time run at first with Gary Grody coming up. In the on-deck circle, Ken Boswell. Al Weiss was scheduled up. Grody has doubled and scored a run and two times up. Batting at 252. with a time run at first. No one out in the top of the seventh inning. (laughs) 
Wilson taking plenty of time before looking in for the signs. Now gets set. Garrett edges off at first base. And the pitch. Brody squares, bunts the ball foul. Strike one. Mets playing for a tie here in the seventh inning. By the way, when Tommy Agee doubled in the sixth inning, it was his 175th extra base hit. No, base hit, which is a new Met record. He is one behind an extra base hit with 59. Pitch back, bunted out toward the front of home plate. It is a fair ball, and the catcher, McCarver, comes out, feels the ball, started to go to second, and then decided to go to first when he saw he had no chance at second base. Actually, what happened, McCarver charged out, and that ball was in back of him. He had to reach back to get it and then lost the chance for a play at second. So on the sacrifice, 2-4, it puts the time run at second and brings up Ken Boswell batting for Al White. Grant Jackson starting to throw in the bullpen for the Phillies, the left-hander. Boswell in last night's ball game had two hits and four times up. Batting 255 for the year with 44 RBIs and five home runs. First pitch, high a ball. Bill Wilson. Set to go. A check at second base. Garrett there and the pitch back to Boswell. Lined in the center field. It should be playable. There is Larry Heisel. He makes the catch. Garrett halfway goes back to second. And the Phillies pick up their second out. That'll bring up Ken Singleton, who is batting in the pitcher's position. He was a pinch hitter in the ball game for Ron Herbel. He started a two-run rally when he singled the right field his first time up. Pittsburgh did not score in the bottom of the fifth inning. So going to the sixth, it's Montreal three, Pittsburgh one. New pitch in the ball game for Pittsburgh. Brunette is out. And John Lamb is in. Singleton batting left-handed, and he takes the strike over the outside corner. Strike one. Singleton got his base hit off Chris Short, batting right-handed. Ken batting 258 for the year. Has 50 base hits for the year. Pitch back. It is high and outside. One ball, one strike. Phillies lead four to three. Two men on top of the seventh inning. The Mets have Wayne Garrett on at second base. Wilson set. Here's the pitch. High and outside. Ball two. Two balls, one strike. And coming to this ball game, his game had an earned run average of 4.98. Almost five runs for nine innings. The 2 1 pitch. Swung on and fouled off. For the count, two balls, two strikes. Two balls, two strikes. Two men out. Garrett at second. And the right-hander sets up. Here's the pitch. It is just outside, and Wilson was on his way to the dugout. Wilson on his way to the dugout, but he had Singleton struck out. Down now goes to three and two. Wilson goes back to the mound. On deck batter for the Mets, Tommy Agee. Three two count. Wilson set. Garrett at second. Here's the pitch. Swung on a miss and single in the struck out, and that ends the inning. Second strikeout for Wilson. And both strikeouts have come with a runner in scoring position. No run, no hits, no errors, a walk, a man left at second. And the score in the middle of the seventh. The Phillies four, the Mets three. Well, fans, as you well know. 
Time is slowly running out on the 1970 baseball season at Jay Stadium, and only four more home dates remain. One of these dates is fan appreciation night on Thursday, October 1st, when the Mets meet the Chicago Cubs in the final game of the season at 7.05. And the New York Mets management, by way of showing their appreciation, will give everyone who attends the game that night an attractive beverage tray, complete with colorful Met coasters, and it will prove mighty useful around the house. It's a gift every Met fan will enjoy having. So why don't you plan to be on hand for Fan Appreciation Night Thursday, October 1st, when the Mets close out their regular season at 7.05 for the Chicago Cubs. The Mets will play the first of four against the Cubs on Monday night. That's the makeup game, game time at 8. They'll play Tuesday night at 8. Wednesday afternoon at 2 and Thursday night at 7.05. now to the bottom of the seventh inning. The Phillies leading four to three. Mets now have Wayne Garrett playing third base. Joe Foy out. And Ken Boswell playing second. Al White's out. So it'll be Clendenin at first. Boswell at second. Harrelson at short. Garrett at third. In the outfield, Cleon Jones in left. Tommy Agee in center. And Ken Singleton in right. for the Phillies will be Tony Taylor. He is two for three in this game with two runs scored. He singled in the first, doubled in the fifth. Taylor's had four hits and seven times up in this series. Right hand batter, batting 295. He's having his best year ever in the major leagues. Nine home runs, 53 runs battled in. On the mound, Gary Gentry. He worked the sixth inning, gave up one base hit, a double. Allowed no runs, left one on. First pitch is inside a ball. Cardinals got a run. Now the 1 0 pitch. It is lined down deep in the left field corner, will be extra bases. The ball is off of the wall, dropped by Cleon Jones, but Taylor goes in with a double. Ball hit high off the wall, not far from a home run, maybe about a foot. And Taylor has his third hit of the ball game, his second double, and the Phillies have a runner second with no one out, with Don Money coming up. Cardinals in the bottom of the second inning scored off Bill Hands, and the Cardinals lead Chicago 1-0 after two. They won the first game 2-1 to one behind Bob Gibson's two hitter. Don Money has a base hit and a run batted in and two official times up. Glendennon looking for a sacrifice. Here's the pitch. It is taken high in bunny position, ball one. Wayne Garrett is about even with the bag at third. Now he moves up just a little bit. Taylor has good speed on his second. The pitch back, swung on and missed. And they got one ball and one strike. Phillies lead 4-3. to three. They have 10 base hits in the game. Two off Gentry. Both hits off Gentry have been doubled. Six off Sadecki, the starter. Two off Ryan. Now at 1-1. Gentry back to the plate. Pitches foul back, and the count goes to one ball and two strikes. Dick Selma starts to warm up in the bullpen for the Phillies. Selma was the losing pitcher in last night's ball game. Also lost $500 for his remarks about the umpire, signed by the National League president, Charles Finney. Now at 1-2, the pitch by Gentry. Again fouled off into the stands over the first base area. The count stays at 1-2. and two. At the end of five, it's Montreal 3, Pittsburgh 1. Carl Morton pitching for the Expos. John Lamb now in the ball game for the Pirates. Now Gentry again ready for the 1-2 pitch. It is inside. Money has to jump away. It is actually it hit him. So Money is nicked by the pitch, and he is on. So Gentry now in trouble. Runners at first and second. No one out, and Darren Johnson coming up. Johnson has walked and singled twice. People who care don't litter. The people of Rhinegold care. 
I ask you to keep America beautiful. Gary Gentry losing the batter with the count at one ball and two strikes by hitting down money. Now the Mets are looking for sacrifice. Runners at first and second. No one out and Darren Johnson coming up. Johnson has lost in single twice. People who care don't litter. The people of blind gold care. They ask you to keep America beautiful. Gary Gentry losing the batter with the count at one ball and two strikes by hitting down money. Now the Mets are looking for a sacrifice. Darren Johnson, big power hitter. Here's the pitch. He squares around, takes high a ball, and Gentry behind one ball, no strike. Doug McGraw starting to warm up in the bullpen for the Mets. Now coming out to the mound is Gil Hodges. Gil Hodges has been out to the mound many times here tonight. He took Sadecki out of the ball game in the fifth. Took Ryan out of the ball game in the fifth. And now he's out to talk to Gary Gentry. In this ball game, the Phillies got the early lead when Tony Taylor singled the center field. A hard smash. The center went through the legs and found the aging went for a single and a two-base error for Taylor to end up at third. Now Money bounced one down to third with Joe Foy and the rest of the infield in. Foy had a play at the plate but bobbled the ball and lost a chance to throw out Money at home. But he did pick up the out at first base. Mets batted up with a run in the third. Phillies took a lead in the fourth on a two-run home run. Got another run in the fifth. The Mets got two in the sixth. Now play is in, and Johnson takes the pitch inside ball two. Again, Johnson in bunning position. So, again, Gentry missing, and they count two balls, no strike. Mets won their ball game last night when Dick Selma, the runners at first and second, and no one out, walked Bud Harrelson, who was trying to bunt. The 2-0 pitch, and it's in for a call strike. Aaron Johnson again in bunting position, taking the pitch, and the count now 2-1. Two, two Johnson with 87 RBIs, the leading RBI man in the Phillies. Now he punches one out over first, but it's going to be foul. Aaron Johnson with Don Clendenin charging took a bunning stance, and then as the ball got to the plate, he bunted it, but bunted it hard. It was far enough that it was out of the dirt part of the infield, and it landed foul by about two feet. It would have been devastating. Montreal did not score in the top of the sixth. They lead three to one as the Pirates bat in the bottom of the sixth inning. So the cat, two balls and two strikes. When Nenon drops back, not figuring a bunch, Garrett also back at third. No one out. The Mets have their infield back for what they hope to be a double play. Here's the pitch. It is a check swing ground ball foul on the first base side. The cat saves it two and two. The last time up, Darren Johnson batting against Nolan Ryan had a half swing and lined a single to right. First time up, he singled the center field on a 3 2 pitch. First official time up, he had walked his first time up on a 3 2 pitch. Two balls, two strikes. The Phillies leading four to three. They have runners at first and second with no one out in the bottom of the seventh. Now Gentry ready. And the pitch. It is a curve ball just outside. So Gentry again three and two. This is the fourth time he has been three and two in one complete inning of pitching and in pitching to six batters. Runners at first and second. Taylor fast at second base. Money pretty good at first. Here's the pitch. The runner's going. The pitch has popped up. So an infield fly. The batter automatically out as Boswell backs up in the outfield grass to make the catch. And Taylor gets back to second. Money back to first. Good pitch by Gary Gentry. A big pitch. That brings up Willie Montanez batting for the pitcher Bill Wilson. Willie Montanez. Last night's ball game, he was a pinch hitter and blooped the single to center field. It was part of a big four-run inning for the Philadelphia Phillies.
Martinez batting at 300. He has had six hits and 20 times up. The Cubs do not score in the top of the third. The Cardinals lead one nothing after two and a half. The Cardinals won the first game two to one behind Bob Gibson's two hitter. Martinez pinch hitting for the pitcher Bill Wilson. That means Dick Selma will be the next pitch in the ball game for the Phillies. Runners at first and second. Martinez, a left-hand batter. He has good speed. Gentry backs off the pitching rubber, and here comes manager Gil Hodges out. We could have Doug McGraw in this ball game. Doug McGraw warming up in the bullpen. Gil Hodges hesitating before going over the baseline. Now goes on over and goes out to the mound. Gentry stands with his arms folded, looking out toward the bullpen. Art Chamsky is going out toward right field. Art Chamsky will be going in the ball game as Doug McGraw comes in, so that means they'll be switching batting positions. Chamsky will bat in the fifth batting position. Singleton going out, who was in the ninth batting position from an earlier switch. We'll see McGraw bat in his position. McGraw coming in has a record of three and six. This will be his 52nd appearance. Last time out was three and a third innings against Pittsburgh. He was a losing pitcher as the Pirates won in the tenth inning. Five score, nine to five. Now the Philadelphia Phillies are making the change, and to tell you about that, here's Ralph China. All right, Lindsey Nelson with Willie Martinez up and a left-hand batter, and Doug McGraw coming in the ball game, a left-hand pitcher. Frank Casey, the manager of the Phillies, has substituted Jim Hutto, a right-hand batter. H-U-T-T-O, Jim hitting 187 for the year, with three home runs and 12 runs batted in. In the ball game, Art Chamsky has taken over in right field. For the Mets have Chamsky in right, A.G. in center, Jones in left. Jones just now completing throwing a little bit to keep his arm loose. Phillies have runners at first and second, one man out, bottom of the seventh inning, and they lead four to three. So right here, a big, big job, job for Doug McGraw. Doug has a screwball. It's effective against right-hand batters. And he checks out the signs from Jerry Goody. He gets set and the pitch. It is in for a call strike. Just before the pitch, Harrelson had moved over to second to move Taylor back to second base, and then he broke back to his shortstop position. Taylor, a fast man at second. Money on at first. Taylor had doubled. Money was hit by a pitch to get on with the count at one ball and two strikes on him. Now at one strike. A draw. Double checks at second. Here's the pitch. A true ball hit down to short, a play at second for Harrelson to throw there in time on the first to double play. So McGraw doing a great job getting Hutto to ground and do a double play, a fine play on the play by Harrelson as he charged the ball, fielded the ball right on the edge of the infield grass, threw back to second base to Boswell, and Boswell's throw, throw on the first base was in time. So it's a 6-4-3 double play. In the inning, no runs, one hit, no errors, and one man left on. And the score at the end of seven, the Phillies four, the New York Mets three. Now here's... My men shop at Lafayette Radio. Where are you going? Lafayette Radio, that's where I'm found, yeah. It's the home of stereo Lafayette Radio is your summer fun headquarters, and now you can save on these specials. Binoculars, 7x35, now $16.95. Walkie-talkie for out-of-doors fun, boating, hiking, or fishing, $5.95 and up. There's 23,000 items in stock, all at Lafayette Radio, 79 Central Avenue in Albany. Other convenient locations in Schenectady, Glen Falls, and Pittsfield, Massachusetts. It's the home of Stereo Sound.
we're going now to the top of the eighth inning. The Mets behind by one, and now for the play-by-play in this exciting ball game, Lindsey Nelson. Thank you very much, Ralph Cannon. Hello, everybody. Dick Thomas on the mound now, making his 70th appearance. He was the losing pitcher last night. When he worked the ninth inning, he's been credited with 22 saves this year for the Philadelphia Phillies. He is a former New York Mets. And Tommy Agee, top of the batting order, is up to lead off for the New York Mets. All Selma last night. Agee singled the right to drive in the tying and winning run. Here's the first pitch, and it's swung on and pops up to first base. And right there is Darren Johnson to make the catch. Last night, A.G. Swivel one two off the handle to right field. That time, he was jammed again and popped it up to first. The Pittsburgh Pirates did not score in the sixth. Montreal is coming up in the seventh inning, leading the Pirates three to one. Now, Bud Harrelson is coming up for the Mets. He is a switch hitter batting left. He had a single to drive in a run in the top of the sixth. Harrelson is one for three here tonight. Big Selma, hard-throwing right-hander, and the pitch is high for a ball. Third baseman Don Money stays on the grass, thinking that Harrelson might try to bunny his way on. The Phillies are leading by a score of 4-3 to three here. Here's a pitch that is fired and for a tall strike. It's 1-1. One, one. Leon Jones is waiting on deck. This is a 1-1 one, one delivery. The ball swung on and missed. It's 1-2. Selma has been very effective in late inning relief this year for the Phillies. He has a blazing fastball. Here's a 1-2 delivery. Breaking pitch. It misses low, and the count goes 2-2 two two now to Bud Harrelson. The 2-2 two two delivery. Third ball high, and it's out full at 3-2. Darren Johnson playing first base over near the line, guarding it. Trying to protect against the extra base hit possibility. This will be a big payoff pitch coming here, and it's on the way. Swung on, and it's fouled on the left field line. Ron Stone gives chase, but it's in the seats and out of play. So the count stays full at 3-2. The Mets are looking for a base on it. Looking for some way to get the tying run on board here in the top half of the eighth inning. Selma bends forward from the waist to get the sign. Here's the 3-2 delivery. He walked in, high and tight. So now Harrison goes to first. The tying run is on. Lee Park for station identification. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. This is WOKO in Albany, New York. Our temperature is 72 degrees. Cahoe's Savings Bank time is now 2 till 10. Time to get a safe deposit box for your valuables at Cahoe's Savings Bank. This is Lindsey Nelson with Ralph Sandler and Bob Murphy at County Mac Stadium in Philadelphia, where the Phillies are leading the Mets by a score of 4-3. to three. The Mets are batting in the eighth with a runner at first and one man out. Leon Jones steps into the batter's box. Selma's pitch in there for a call strike. Jones is 0-2 in the walk. He has slide to right, got it out third to first and walk. He was unhappy with the call on the last pitch by plate umpire Dick Stella. Dick Selma last night after the ball game leveled all sorts of charges at the umpires. As a result, he was fined $500 by Chubb Feeney, the president of the National League. This umpiring crew was not entirely satisfied with his apology. Here's a sort of first not in time. Selma went into the umpire's room before the ball game and made a personal apology. Strike one delivery to Jones. Curveball and a tie. One and one. Waiting on deck is Don Clem Dennis. Darren Johnson is holding against the runner at first base. Selma sets up 1-1 one, one pitch. Swung on, foul back. It's out of play and the count's one and two. Tim McCarver is the catcher for the Philadelphia Phillies. He has spent most of the season on the sidelines with a busted hand. Teams have been known to run on McCarver. This will be a 1-2 pitch. Off the stretch. Breaking pitch low. It's 2-2. Two and two. Already tonight, the Cardinals have defeated the Cubs in the first game of their doubleheader, and the Cards are leading in the second game. Montreal is leading the Pittsburgh Pirates. That makes this game doubly big here at Johnny Mack Stadium as far as the Mets are concerned. 
Bridges, they swung on him and struck him out. Jones is out, two away. Now Don Clendenin, he's gone 0 for 3 here tonight. Down it out short the first fly of the center and grounded into a double play. Then Denver was up for the bases loaded. Nobody out in the sixth inning. Billy Wilson was brought in to pitch to him, and he hit into a double play. Wilson pitched two innings here tonight, allowed no runs, no hits. Wilson pitched two and a third last night, allowed no runs and one hit. So big Dan Clendon and handles that bat loosely at the plate. Here's Thomas Pick. It is high for a ball. Archemsky is on deck. Bud Allison's the runner at first. Selma set. Breaking pitch. It's just deep to left. Way back. Could be. Going, going. Home run. For Don Clendenin. Off the facade of the upper deck. And the New York Mets go out in front. By a score of 5-4. to four On Don Clendenin's 21st home run of the season. He hit a big Selma fastball. Top of the eighth, and they're out in front by a score of five to four. Here's a pitch in for a call strike, and it's one-one to Shamsky, batting for his first time tonight. He did not start the ball game because the Philadelphia Phillies started the left-hander, Chris Short. One-one offering is on the way. It's a fastball high and tight, and it goes two balls and a strike. Now to Shamsky. Wayne Garrett is on deck. Tim Millen. He hit a shot. It wasn't a fly ball. He ripped it on a line. Montreal did not score in the seventh. The Pirates are coming up in the bottom of the seventh. Montreal still leading three to one. Has a breaking pitch in for a call strike. Two balls, two strikes to Hart Chemsky. Left-hander Grant Jackson's up and throwing in the bullpen. For the Philadelphia Phillies. Two-two pitch to Chemsky. Swung on and foul back. He stays alive at two and two. Action down in the Met bullpen. Right now, Ron Taylor's up in Troy. Ron Taylor is throwing in the Met bullpen. Here's a 2 2 pitch to Shamsky. Swung on and foul back. It's out of play. This is the first time tonight that the New York Mets have been even, either even or out in front in this ball game. A Philly scored in the bottom half of the first inning. The Mets did even it up in the third, but then the Phils went out in front. Three to one when they got two in the fourth. Here's a swing and a miss, strike three. Selma got two strikeouts, but he gave up a two-run homer. So it's two runs on one hit, a walk, no errors, and none left. In the middle of the eighth inning, the score is the Mets five and the Phillies four. What's a smile worth? Self-confidence? Hard to pin a price on them? Sure, but people have been doing it for years and shortchanging themselves. Too many thought the cost of dental care too high and so short. Result? Poor and unsightly teeth. Now Blue Shield announces a prepaid dental care program that puts regular dental care within reach of families who once were unable to afford it. For complete information, contact the Dental Services Department, Blue Shield Albany. Available to groups of 50 or more. Tech Motors, your authorized Plymouth, Chrysler, and Imperial dealer, where the selection of the hot new Roadrunners is the largest, the service is the fastest, and the prices are right. Today, learn why no one walks from Whitbeck and Ward. It's a good day. It's a good day. Whitbeck Motors, Sixth Avenue, Troy. 
WOKO, the home of the Mets for the Capital District. The Mets pitcher is Doug McGraw, who came in in the bottom of the seventh inning to get Jim Hutto to hit into an inning-inning double play and get the Mets out of a dangerous spot. It's Tim McCarver, left-hand batting catcher, coming up to lead off of the field here in the bottom of the eighth inning. The Mets, five runs, six hits. The Bills, four runs, ten hits. McCarver has grounded out, single to center, and fouled out to third base. Doug McGraw into the motion. Pitch is fired low. Pass Brody on back, and it's 1-0. and Ron Taylor continues to throw in the Mets bullpen. Mets have used five pitches here tonight. Ray Sadecki started, worked four innings. Nolan Ryan worked a third of an inning. One open. It's high. Ron Herbel worked two thirds. Gary Gentry worked one in the third, and now Tug was off. Two and oh is the count to McCarver, and when you have a one run lead, you don't want to put him on. Pitch is inside. McGraw's gone behind. Three and oh. That brings Doug McGraw in from, or rather, Bud Harrelson in to see McGraw from the post Detroit stop, and Ken Dunham's coming over. This is what happened to the New York Mets last night. They were leading by a run, and the Phils were coming up in the ninth, and Dean Kent walked the leadoff at it. All right, Ken Dunham goes back to first. Harrelson goes back to his post Detroit. The count is three balls and no strikes to leadoff man Tim McCarver with Oscar Gamble on deck. It fired right down the pipe for a call strike. Three and one to McCarver. The three one delivery. Swung on and ripped down the right field line. It'll be extra bases for McCarver. He's around first on his way to second. Dempsey is in the bullpen receiving the ball. Fires it in a stand up double, leading off the bottom of the eighth by Tim McCarver. Dean Chance is getting up to throw in the bullpen for the New York Mets. Oscar Gamble is coming up. Dean Chance is up and throwing in the bullpen. The Phils have the tying run at second in the bottom of the eighth with nobody out. That was a 3-1 pitch, and it was ripped right down the right field line. Rolled all the way down into the Philly bullpen in the right field corner. Oscar Gamble. And up one time, and he lined out to second base. He's a left-hand batter. Glenn Denon in on the grass at first, expecting a sacrifice to step here. Garrett hanging around the cut out of the grass at third. Here's a pitch. Gamble swings and fouls it back. He took the full cut. Oscar Gamble is hitting 262 for the year. He's had one homer and 18 runs batted in. That's figuring it's a home club but try to sacrifice him over. So Glenn Dunham stays about 45 feet away from the plate. Well in on the grass at first. McGraw takes the sign from Grody. He sets up. Here's the pitch. Gamble ready to swing away. Watch his low and it's the ball. Again, he was not running. And so Glenn Dunham retreats a few steps now. But Carver is the runner at second base. Larry Heistel is on deck. The Mets are leading 5-4 to four, with the Phillies threatening in the bottom of the eighth inning. It's the gamble swung on, fouled out to the left side. On the pitch, Clint Denon was charging again. Pittsburgh did not score in the bottom of the seventh inning, going to the eighth. Montreal three and Pittsburgh one. Chicago did not score in the fourth, going to the bottom of the fourth. It is the Cardinals one and the Cubs nothing. Mets trying to get out of a jam here in the bottom half of the eighth inning to protect a one-run lead. Here's a one-two pitch to Oscar Gamble. Breaking the swung on and tipped back into the glove of Grody for the strikeout. Grody hanging on, and it is one away. Doug McGraw got him with a curveball. Now Larry Heisel is coming up. He's been nothing but trouble for the Mets tonight. He doubled in the second inning and hit a two-run homer in the fourth, but was struck out by Jeffrey in the sixth. He bats number eight in the order. Heisel's hitting 2 for the season, but he's been rough of late and rough on the Mets. 
Ralph pops the ball in his glove once or twice. At third base now, against the right-hand batter, Gary Gentry, or rather Wayne Garrett, is guarding that line. The big gap between Garrett and shortstop Bud Harrelson. That ball is low, and it's ball one to Heifel. He's followed by Ron Stone, a left-hand batting outfielder. Stone bats number nine in the present batting order of the Philadelphia Phillies. So Stone is on deck, swinging the bat loosely. 1-0 pitch, swung on, and did he hold up? It was a check swing. And played umpires asking for the first base umpire, Dave Davidson, to give him opinion. He said he swung the bat. So it is one and one. Heifel started to swing, checked the pitch, which was down in the dirt. And played umpire, Dick Stello, had indicated that it was a ball, then asked an opinion of Dave Davidson at first, who said he took a swing. It's one and one. McGraw sets up. 1-1 one, one pitch. Fastball hit on the ground to second base. Boswell is there. Up with it. Goes to Clint Dillon. Two away. McCarver moves to third on the infield out. Now Ron Stone is a left-hand batter. He is being called back to the dugout. We're going to get somebody else coming up for him. They want to play righty-lefty here. Ricky Joseph. Ricardo Joseph is coming up. He is a right-hand batter, an infielder by trade. Ricky Joseph is hitting 229 for the year. He has three home runs and 10 runs batted in. Rick Joseph is batting for Ron Stone. This is strictly righty-lefty. So the Mets are leading by a score of five to four. The Phillies have the tying run at third, represented by Tim McCarver. There are two men out as Rick Joseph steps into the batting box to fills her batting in the bottom of the eighth. McGraw is working straight away. Pass ball, and it's a little low. Ball one. Dean Kent continues to throw in the Mets bullpen. McGraw reads the sign of Gary Grody. Here's a pitch just missing. A little low. McGraw has gone behind 2-0 oh on Rick Joseph. Bud Chad Grant has been brought in by the Pittsburgh Pirates now in the eighth inning with Montreal batting. He is a serious pitch of the work tonight for the Pirates. Montreal is leading 3-1. to one. Here's a 2-0 -oh pitch to Joseph. Curveball, ball, swung out and missed. It is 2-1. St. Louis did not score in the fourth. The Cubs are coming up in the fifth inning with the Cardinals leading them one to nothing. Cardinals won the first game tonight by a score of two to one. This will be a two-one pitch now to Rick Joseph. It's on the way. Check swing foul ball to the right side on the ground and out of play. Count is two balls and two strikes to Joseph. He backs out of the batter's box. Reaches down to get a handful of dirt. Crosses to the side. Takes a look at McGraw. Moves the dirt out in the batter's box. That's the edge of the plate. Moves in now. McGraw tries it the bill of his cap. Takes the ball out of the glove. Puts it back in. Looks in for the sign now. He looks at McCarver leading off the bag of dirt. Here's a 2-2 two -two pick. Pull out and miss. He stuck him out and they're out of the inning. McGraw runs about three steps off the mound towards the dugout. And now McCarver has died at third on McGraw's second strike out of the inning. No runs are hit, no errors, and one man left. At the end of eight full innings of play, the score is the Mets five and the Phillies four. Now the Philadelphia Phillies make a change in left. Scott Reed is in to play left field. Wayne Garrett is up for the Mets, and he fouls it off for strike one. Mets are batting here in the top of the ninth, facing Dick Selma. Wayne Garrett's been up one time in this game, and he drew a walk. And Selma into the motion. The strike one delivery is on the way. Breaking pitch. It's high. One and one. Selma is the pitcher of record for the Philadelphia Phillies. With a breaking pitch outside. Doug McGraw is the pitcher of record for the New York Mets. 
With Garrett at the plate, Jerry Grody is next in the New York Nuts batting order. Delmas 2-1 delivery. He's swung on and it is lined up the middle for a base hit for Wayne Garrett. Larry Heisel comes over, shoots it up, plays it back. Garrett turns and holds with a single to center field. Leading off here in the ninth inning. That'll bring up Jerry Grody. Montreal Expos did not score in the eighth inning. The Pittsburgh Pirates are coming up in the bottom of the eighth with Montreal leading 3-1. to one. Jerry Grody has doubled. Slide to right and sacrifice. He takes a look down to Eddie Yost, the sign man at third now to see if he is sacrificing Wayne Garrett over the second. Ken Boswell is on deck. The Mets are leading five to four. The ball is butted up into the air, and it is taken there momentarily by Soma. Now he throws to second for the fourth play. And the force is made there as Garrett came back to the bag at first as the ball was popped up. Selma had decided that he would let it hit and see what kind of a play he could affect in a possible double play, but Garrett had come back to the bag at first base, and so then when Selma bobbled the ball, he picked it up, had an easy play at second because both the Met base runners were at first. So it's simply a forced play. The put out goes to the shortstop Larry Boer, the assist to Selma. Brody attempting to sacrifice his it into a forced play. He's the runner at first, and Boswell is up. Boswell's been up one time, and he flies deep to center field. Fastball is in for a called strike. Brody, in trying to sacrifice, popped the ball up out toward the mouth. There's a swing and a foul ball off a breaking pitch on the ground back of first. Yogi Berra came up with the ball after Darren Johnson had taken a swipe at it and come up empty. Boswell bats number eight in the Mets batting order, and Tug McGraw bats nine. He's windmilling the bat out there on deck. The count is two strikes to Boswell. There's a swing and a foul ball back in out of play. Selma had decided when he saw that ball popped up that he would try to pull the, un the, the intentional muff and take a shot at getting two, but he scribbled it off. No right, because when he did get control, both the net base runners were still at first. There's a swing and a fly ball down the left field line. Long run for Scott Reed, and he makes the catch in fair territory, just coming across the line, and Grody retreats to first base. Boswell with a fly ball right down the left field line. It was a long run for Scott Reed, but he got there and made the catch about a foot in fair territory and came across the line. Doug McGraw is coming up. Doug McGraw at the plate this year is four for 12. He's had five runs out of them. Brody is at first and two men are out. The Mets are leading by a score of five to four. Dick Selma sets up, checks the runner. Here's the pitch to McGraw. He checks on it, but does not swing, and it's outside for a ball. Tommy A.G. is waiting on deck. Aaron Johnson playing behind the runner at first. Rody lead, curveball, hit on the ground to short. Big hop to Boa. He goes to Tony Taylor for the force at second, and the side is retired. So, the Mets... Got no runs ahead of hit, no errors, and one man left. In the middle of the ninth inning, the score is the Mets five and the Phillies four. In the morning, about six o'clock, the ninth wonder of the world takes place. Henry, it's time to get up. Join me at six to ten on the Tom Rambler Show and the Sound of America. We try to make things just a little bit more pleasant than what you're used to, perhaps. Join me on the Tom Rambler Show and the Sound of America, WOKO. Henry, it's Sunday. Go back to sleep. You're listening to the Sound of America, WOKO, 1460 Radio in Albany. WOKO brings you the best in good time music, all American sports, and essential information 24 hours a day. Come on home to the Sound of America. Come on home to WOKO. At Three River 
Dodger Stadium in Pittsburgh, the Pirates did not score in the eighth inning. Montreal is coming up in the ninth, leading the Pirates by a score of three to one. In St. Louis, in the second game, the Cubs did not score in the fifth. The Cardinals are coming up in the bottom of the fifth, leading the Cubs by a score of one to nothing. Cardinals won the first game of the Twi Night at two to one. Right here, the Mets are leading five to four. Doug McGraw will be facing the top of the Philly batting order here in the bottom of the ninth inning. Larry Boa, the switch hitting shortstop, will lead off. He has fouled to the catcher, grounded out short to first, grounded out third to first, and struck out. He's batting right against the left-hander, Doug McGraw. Wayne Garrett, the third baseman, moves into the cut out of the grass at third. The remainder of the Met alignment stays the same as it was. No defensive changes here in the ninth inning. Shamsky is still in right field. Doug McGraw, end of the motion. Breaking pitch in there for a call strike to Larry Boa. He's followed in the batting order by tough Tony Taylor. So again, takes a look around. Into the motion. Strike one delivery. Fastball, a little low. It's one and one. McGraw came in in the seventh. Got Hutto to hit into a double play. Two-thirds of an inning credit to join there. Then he worked the eighth inning. So this is the third inning in which he has worked. Fastball fouled off. It's one and two. Ball came back into the stand. He's all standing just behind the rubber. Larry Boa back in, swinging the bat loosely. Now Mazar is up and taking the side. He's into the motion, the one-two pitch. Breaking pitch, swung out and missed. He struck him out. McGraw went to the Scrooge to get the right-hand batter. The third strikeout for Doug McGraw. And that has at least temporarily ended the hitting streak of Larry Boa. He brought an 18-game hitting streak into this game, but he has gone 0 for 5 here tonight. Tony Taylor's up. He has been the man the Mets haven't been able to deal with. He's single. And then went to third when A.G. committed a two-base error on his line drive in the first inning. He doubled in the fifth and he doubled in the seventh. He's a right-hand batter. A major league veteran. McGraw now looks in, gets the side. Here's the pitch. And it's high for a ball to Tony Taylor. He's followed in the batting order by Don Money. The Mets lead five to four. The Bills are batting in the bottom of the ninth inning. As a fastball down the pipe for a call strike. It's had a little mustard on it. It's one and one. Jody sends out the sign. One-one pitch. Breaking pitch. It's a little high. Two and one now to Tony Taylor. It's a two-one delivery on the way. Fastball fouled off. It's two and two now to Tony Taylor. Doug McGraw, the fifth pitcher to work in this game tonight for the New York Mets, is the pitcher of record for the Mets at this point. Dick Stomer is the pitcher of record at this point for the Philadelphia Phillies. Here's a two-two delivery to Taylor. Breaking for Taylor. He took a lot off of that one. And Tony Taylor was set for the fastball, and he is out swinging. Two strikeouts for McGraw, four in the ball game, two in this inning. So with two men out and nobody on, John Money's out. John Money's rounded out, third to first. Had a base hit, had a sacrifice, tried to drive in a run, and was hit by a pitch ball. He's a right-hand batter. Hitting 302 for the year. Draw sits, swung on, and foul back. It's out of play. Cody comes back halfway, but it's well back. Strike one to Don Money. The Mets five, the Phils four. The draw again takes Cody's side. Into the motion. Pitch is on the way. It's in there for a call strike, a breaking pitch. 
It's 0-2 now. They're down many. As McGraw broke that ball into the strike zone. And he swings it out a couple of times. Two men out, nobody on base. Ed McGraw now again with the pitch. It's on the way. Turn out and miss. Took him out and the ball game is over. McGraw has struck out the side in the ninth inning. He has struck out five all told. He is the winning pitcher. Dick Selma for the second consecutive night is the losing pitcher. The New York Mets have swept the two-game series in Philadelphia to tighten up the race in the Eastern Division of the National League and to keep the hopes of the New York Mets aflame in this Senate race in the ninth inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, none left. We'll be back in a moment with a final summary and totals. Right now, the final score of this ball game is the New York Mets 5 and the Philadelphia Phillies 4. The New York Mets have come from behind here tonight to pull one out on a big one. And to tell you how they did it, here is Ralph Steiner. Paul, it was the clutch hitting of Don Clendenin, who has been the hitting star for the Mets all year long. He came up and with a two-run home run off Dick Selma, put the Mets in front. And then Doug McGraw came through with a tremendous relief performance to save the ball game. For Don Clendenin, it was his 13th gamer. And it was his 21st home of the year, came in the eighth inning. He now has 92 runs batted in. McGraw came in the ball game with runners at second and third, and he got Jim Hutto, a pinch hitter, to hit into a double play to end the inning in the seventh inning. He then, in the eighth inning, gave up a leadoff double, but then struck out two of the next three batters. In the ninth inning, he struck out three in a row to pick up his win. Doug McGraw, it was his fourth win of the year. He has lost six. Dick Selma, the losing pitcher, losing two in a row to the Mets here in relief, now with a record of seven and nine. Since Dick Selma left the Mets, the Mets have defeated him five times in the last two years. So, temporarily, the Mets are within two and a half games of Pittsburgh. The Pirates are batting in the bottom of the ninth inning. If they lose their ball game, they're trading three to one. The Mets would be two games back. In the ball game, the Philadelphia Phillies took the lead in the first inning when they got an unearned run. The New York Mets came back to tie up the ball game in the third inning on a double by Jerry Grody and a two-out base hit by Tommy Agee. But then on a two-run home run by Larry Heitzel, the Phillies took the lead by a score of 3-1. to one. They added another run in the fifth inning on a double by Tony Taylor and a single by Darren Johnson and a sacrifice fly in between, and it was a 4-1 to one ball game. The Mets then got back in the ball game as they picked up two runs in the sixth inning. Ken Singleton led off with a single to right field. Chris Short was still in the ball game as a starting pitcher. Tommy Agee doubled the center field to put Singleton over at third base. With runners at second and third, Bud Harrelson singled on a 3-2 pitch to left field to drive in Singleton from third base. Cleon Jones worked out a walk in a 3-1 pitch, and with the bases loaded, it brought up Don Clendenin. Don hit into a double play in the first pitch with a run scoring, and then Bill Wilson, who came in the ballgame, struck out Dave Marshall to end the inning. But the Mets had pulled up with three runs to a 4-3 position. They then came on to get two runs in the eighth inning on the two-run home run by Don Clendenin. And in the eighth inning with Dick Selman in the ballgame, Tommy Agee popped up to first base. Bud Harrelson, who has a tremendous walk ratio, walked on the 3-2 pitch to put the time run at first. Leon Jones was struck out on the curveball for the second out of the inning. Then Don Clendenin lined a home run into left field, and the Mets went out in front by a score of 5-4, to four, and that's the way the ballgame ended. 